French shutter, a typical French shutter, using vole lamb. Now, vole lamb is basically a tongue and groove board, like this. Yeah, so it's like what you'd expect for a flooring, you know, wooden flooring in your home, what have you, with a tongue and groove. The groove and then the tongue. Now, there's a difference between volet lamb, which is a French uh, shutter board. You know, for window shutters or door shutters, is that this is loose. The actual tongue and groove on the volet lamb is loose. And that's because shutters, obviously, because they're outside, are exposed to the elements. And being exposed to the elements, they'll expand and contract across its width. Generally, wood does not expand and contract um, you know, along its length, not to any you know, real degree at all. So that is basically what you have. You have your Voli land boards such as these, and they accumulate into the width of a shutter. So what we're going to be making today is a shutter, and this shutter is 855 millimetres wide and 1,630 millimetres tall. And it's a pair of shutters. So there's two, two shutters, effectively, you've got to make, but they're a matching pair. Oh, exciting, eh? Okay. Well, let me just double check over here, make sure this is all okay. Do, 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 do. That's good. Lovely jubbly. I hope everybody is okay. Hello, Glasgow. How are you doing, buddy? I hope you're well. So, in this video, I hope to show a couple of little techniques that I do that will make life a lot easier if you want to make yourself a shutter or it could even be a garden gate. You know, pretty much the same thing. They're tongue and groove boards that um, are all joined together edge to edge. And it's not the same as floorboarding. This stuff isn't anyway. Um, the problem if you use something like floorboarding is that the tongue and grooves are really tight. And then you can get expansion and contraction, so it's a bit of a no-brainer, really. If you have got something outside, it needs to be able to move. You know, because wood moves. You can't get away from it. That's what wood does. So you have to allow for it. So first of all, I'm going to take these out of these packets. They've got two packets. There's five in each packet. And these are called volet lamb. Now, volet is French for shutter, like window, yeah, window shutter. It'd be volet de fenêtre or something like that. Um, so you've got five boards in each. And they've got a coverage around 90 millimetres. And that's about average, you know, it's about standard on this stuff. And whether you get them in packets like this or whether you buy it loose by length in France or in France, it's, um, it's pretty much all the same stuff, really. And this is a northern um, fir. It's not Douglas. It's not Douglas fir at all. Um, yes, it does rot. But surprisingly, it lasts quite a long while. So they came out of these horrible plastic packets, packets, which I wish they never did, but they do. It's a problem when you buy, buy half this stuff. The thing is, um, you can buy it loose, but it's never, ever straight. You know, there's a builder's merchants near here called Bouchier, and these um, lovely, lovely chat, but they're vole boards, and they're, they're all stacked nicely, but they're never straight. Even these are a bit problematic at times. You have to be, you know. What I do is though, I've got, I'll show you that. There's a way around it if you've got a bit of a bend in your boards. Now remember, this is 1.6 meters long thereabouts, slightly over. Um, and there's two shutters, and and they'll compass a width of 855 millimeters. That's the total width that the two shutters, as a pair of shutters, will be um, covering. Now, like I said, there is a technique, you, well, a simple technique actually. If you do find you've got a bit of a bend in your board, and to find that, you look along it like so, and is it straight? That one is good. Wherever I have a straight one like that, that always goes to the edge. If I have one that's got a bit of a bend in it, which I think that one possibly has, mm, very fraction, fraction bend, not tiny, tiny bend in that one. You can see that it's probably wobbling. I'll push it down into the bench. This bench is flat. It's the second top I put on this bench. One reason is because I put a floor, it didn't have used to have a floor in here. I put a wooden floor on, on furrings, what have you, on joists. 
and level the floor up, and then the, the bench will stand here. <laughs> so I had to raise the top of the bench, but also while I did that, I actually put a new top on it as well, which is only chipboard, which I've sealed with cascabite powder as wood glue, um, and so far it's been really good. I had to put extra timber under the floor, um, under the um, top, to make sure it's stable. Because um, before it had a it had a uh, a pine top on it, which was not that great. See that one's got an obvious bend in it that way. So if, for instance, that one's got a bend in the opposite direction, so as long as they go together in opposites, it will take the low the it won't have so much influence. They'll ca they'll cancel each other out. So whatever stress go stress goes that way, when the other one's going that way, it will cancel that one out, so that they become neutral. If you've got three going one way, well, obviously, you'll be increasing the, um, the potential twist, or bend, sorry. If you've got a twist in your board, it's quite rare, rare actually. I don't get many boards with a twist in it. When I say a twist, like a propeller. How you can actually um, check that is what you call, it's a technique called wi winding sticks. Now, I don't have any laying about here, around here anywhere, but what I will use is just a couple of pieces of wood, such as these. And all you do is, <clears throat> with these two bits of wood, generally speaking, they'll be made for the job. But if you put one on one end like so, yeah, and one on the other end, like so, <laughs> so you can see it, bring it back so you can see it, oh, there you go, like that. And then you eye between the two, yeah? If there's a twist, it will be um, amplified by the width of your winding sticks. They're just bits of straight bits of wood. You can use anything, a bit of aluminium if you like. But uh, that, if, you've got, if you've got a serious twist in it, it'll be obvious anyway. But you don't want a twist in your board because that's something will actually encourage an error, an accumulative error along the line, which you don't want. I generally cut the ones down for the other jobs. But a couple of bends in them is not really an issue. So those two here can go together. This one here is a bit, this one bends that way. So they're a bit bendy, these boards. So that's that way, that's that way, so that's got to go in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. Like so. Anyway, let's see what you guys and gals are saying. Hello there, everybody. I hope you can hear me okay. Oh, look, I've got a, a bot comment already. Hello, Ginger's Giraffe, I hope you're well. Hello, Peter. And happy Dallas. And obviously, Glasgow. I hope the audio is okay. That was the good one. So that one is going that way, so it's that way. That way. So I'm opposing them. I'm opposing Ben. I thought it's pretty obvious, really. And they just go together like so. But what I'm going to do is, on one end of this bench, I might have to move you a bit further out, actually. But on one end of the bench, I clamp. I have, when I do a lot of them, I've, what I do is I clamp. I have got this, this is quite a big job. There's quite a few shutters on there that I've got to do. Um, I've actually got a job to do for a change. It's quite unusual because normally Brexit has killed up my business off, but I had someone, an old customer, who wants more shutters. So, so I'll tell you what I do is I'll clamp a board on the end of this bench. Leave this out of the way. I'll put them on the floor. Ah, it's my foot. Ah, crash, bang, wallop. And I'll, um, on the end of the bench, I'll clamp it 90 degrees to the edge of the bench. And what I use for doing that, I shouldn't really put these on there yet, really. that, should have been, that should have been the first thing I do. That's what I normally do. Probably because I'm live streaming, I can't, that's when you make mistakes, isn't it? And people watching. <laughs> so um, what I'm going to do is grab my four foot, or three foot, four foot, whatever it is, square, which is here. I found it. I can't find, see my clamping board, which is normally there. Probably my dear wife, she probably moved it somewhere. She probably thought it's a bit of wood. Technically, it is a bit of wood. But she should probably put it in the wood pile. <laughs> normally, what happens? So I'll put it on. So that is my wide. Hey, I'll put this movie back so you can see. So let's bring it down a little bit. So that's my big clamp. Big clamp. My big um, square. So the end of the bench is, that's pretty spot on. That's pretty good. Oh, hang on, it'd be better if I have that straight. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Right, so that is square on the end of this bench, but then I'm going to um, clamp a piece of wood. It don't have to be a bit of wood. It could be a piece of aluminium, which I've got here. This is another thing I know quite often use is this. 
So I'll put this on here and clamp this 90 degrees to that side of the bench. And from that, I, I basically everything's just worked off that 90 degrees. And that way, I make sure the shutters end up square. Because I'd be a bit annoying for the customer if they get their lovely new shutters and they are, well, not square. To be fair, more often than not, they don't fit straight away anyway. The reason for that being is because their windows are not square or their openings are not square. But how I make the shutter, I don't know the way they can easily trim the shutter. So I make sure there's no rails going right to the edges or anything like that. So that, bear that in mind, because that way, um, if you do have any issues, you can quite easily uh, correct them. You know? And how I fit my shutters, when I was fitting, I don't do any fitting anymore, but when I was fitting the shutters, um, I always fit one, one first, making sure the middle edge of the shutter is perfectly um, plumb, another one's another vertical, perpendicular to the earth, and, um, and from that, everything else should pan out, so you work from that basically, and, and the other one you fit to that shutter. So one moment you're trimming one edge, the next minute you're trimming the other edge if you need to. But in France, because these buildings here, like this bit I'll build, there's old, um, basically, stone infilled with clay lump. And whatever else, other rubbish they can find and dead bodies. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So that is now square to the edge of this bench. This bench is two and a half metres long, but 1.2 metres wide. I'll get rid of that. Dee, 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 dee. You don't have to use a big old square like that. You can just, you know, you could do the old triangulation if you like. You know, measure, create a square, then measure the corners, and then, then you'll know if you're square on that edge. So if corner to corner and both measurements are identical, it is square. I'm sure Glasgow Kiss knows that. Now, when I do a pair of shutters, I make them as a pair. But I take off the tongues for the middle of the shutter, or the edge, depends on how, well, what I feel at the time. <laughs> and um, I put the two cut edges together. Now this shutter is not as long as these boards. Now, normally, once I've got, well I say normally, once I've made a few shutters, I usually end up with a load of offcuts from the ends. And those offcuts end up being the rails. And on a 1.6 metre shutter, I can grab a tape, make sure I can find one. There you are. That one's better, that's a good tape. That's nice length to work with. So if this shutter was, where's my measurements? I think it's 1655 or something. 1630. So this shutter is one, one metre, 630 millimetres. So one metre, 630 millimetres. So effectively, from here, all that is potentially waste. But I don't waste anything, as you probably know. One thing I'm tight, and the other thing is that, you know, I don't want to waste it. <laughs> That's not big of an environment, is it? So that will be used to make the rails for the shutter. Now, a shutter of this length is going to require three rails, or, or ledges, if you like. Hence, a ledge and brace. Ledge, brace. So there will be an angular timber as well. Now... So obviously, if it's shorter than that, if I usually go up, to, if I go up to say 1.5, you can get away with two. But after 1.5 meters, really, you need to start thinking about putting another, another ledge in. Really, we'll see how it looks. What you know, uh, there, there. No, you need another ledge in that one. 1.6. Uh, so yes, and it's 855 millimeters wide. Let's grab a pen. So I did that one a minute ago. What do I do with that? And a pen. I'm losing my mind. It's all this madness, isn't it? Dee, 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 dee. I will bring in closer in a minute as well. So, I'm a pad. Where's my pads here? And what have I done with my calculator? I don't really need a calculator for that. Oh, there's a pencil. I don't have a pencil, mate. So it's um, 855 wide, the shutter, double check. Right, measure twice, cut once, check twice. <laughs> we had 855 millimetres wide, yeah? 
for the entire width of the shutter. So obviously half of that. If there's any clearance needed, that's up to them to do that. I make sure there's allowance for them to do it. I'm not gonna, you know, if they give me a measurement, that's what it ends up as, simple as that. If they want an iPhone, the clearance. I do make the clear in the, in the measurement instructions, you know, when they provide me with the measurements. Um, so they do know what, what I'm after. So I just make it to whatever they ask. So 855 divided by two, obviously, is gonna be 427.5. So, so times two, Four, 427 millimetres and, you know, 0.5 and a half millimetres. But I've got to allow for what I, well, when I make the shutters, say, for instance, this is the shutter. You do, 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 like so. You have a ledge. They don't go right to the edge. That's a really, if one thing looks god on awful, another thing is if, for instance, you come to fit in the thing and you've got to um, trim it into the hole, for the window itself, you're going to be cutting in to your ledges. So what I do is I make sure the ledges are 20 mil back from one edge, but on the internal edge, you know where they're too close together because of the pair, I make sure that's 40 mil, 40 millimeters back from the edge for the ledges. The ledges or the rails, you know, the horizontal bits of wood like that. You've also got to think about these, um, about the Z as well. You know, the ledge and brace. So off this width here, I need to take off an extra 60 millimetres. But an easy way to do it is just to take off 120 off the 855. So I'll do that first, then divide by two, and that'll give me my length of my rails or my ledges. So I've got 855 minus 120, because obviously it's two times 60, equals 735, divide by two, equals 367.5. So I'll round up to 367. I'm not doing half a millimetre, is that my Tim Woodwork? Definitely not, not for that purpose. It's definitely if it's going to be joining on to something else, but it's not. So one, six, so three, six, seven. Now, if it's going to have three ledges, which it probably will have, it's going to have be um, six of those because there's two, pa two pairs, three on each shutter. So we need, at 367, we need six of. Ta -da! Cool, isn't that a good scribble? Not. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my writing skills, as in handwriting, oh god, that wasn't great in the first place, and now it's terrible. Really bad. Let's move this out of the way because I keep um, tripping over this. You get back in there, you. Anyway. So I need two straight boards to start with. But also, I need some ledges. Now, normally, like I said, what I'll do is I'll, well, I haven't said it yet, actually. If I put the shutter all together, I'd make the shutter up, and then I'd cut all the boards off the end in one go. And those become the offcuts that make the ledges for the next shutter if they're long enough. But I haven't got that yet, because I've been using all my offcuts from a previous job, and I've only got about three left. And obviously, it's not going to do... Um, six shutters because this is a very typical height for a window shutter here in France at 1.6, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7. That's very typical. Um, door shutters are usually uh, about 2.1 to 2.2. Uh, it's, obviously, that varies, but on the whole, you know, the most common ones are 1.6. You get smaller ones, like for instance, where there's a kitchen because you could have a sink and a sink window, maybe if you're lucky, and then that, that, that shutter is likely to be. Shorter, not as tall. So, first things first, I'm gonna have to, well, I'm gonna have to cut some of these boards off to give me those six. So I need six boards cut off, which I'll do on the range of the arm saw over there, because that's what I generally what I use it for, because it works really well, it's a great machine. I don't normally do it this way, like I say, but I will on the first one, because I need those off cuts. because they will be the rails. Don't worry, they won't, they won't have the tongues and the grooves and all that sort of stuff on there, so they look all pretty. And when it comes to the bit a lot of people kind of stuck with is doing those braces. You've got your ledge and the brace. And the brace is that diagonal piece of timber. And I'll explain later what that is for. If you don't already know that is. So, oh, I've got too many things on the floor. Is my fire actually doing anything? Oh, it is just about. 
It's a light, just about. Hopefully that'll start, start warming up. Because it's getting a bit chilly in here, and obviously then the sun's going down, it's um, getting even colder. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to first of all go over there with you. <laughs> oh, come with me. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about doing you about then. Sorry, mate. Uh, see what you're saying. Oh, nine people. Hello there. Hello, Context. Hello, Steve C. How you doing, buddy? Uh, just me and videos. Hiya. Anyone got any ideas so I can get rid of these flipping bot comments? I had a whole string on my. I was going through the ch um, the comments on the other web on the other site, and I had on one one of the videos there must have been fifteen bot comments, and all going to the kind of you know saucy sites. Yeah, obviously I had to check them out to make sure. You never know; they might have been legitimate. No, obviously I just. <laughs> so. I hope the sound is good. Hello, we've got someone else here. Now we've got 10 people here now. Oh, Mr. 10, very nice to have you here. <laughs> right, anyway, so we're going to cut a few of these boards to length. I need to cut six boards to length so it frees me up some uh, boards for those rails. I know I'm repeating myself. I do that, you know, sign of madness, that's what I say. So I'm just going to cut them off this end. And I put my bit of paper down somewhere. Where did I put that? I forgot my measurement already. Oh, God, I'm losing my mind. There it is. Over here. I should have kept it with me. So 367 millimetres. Right. That uh, tape, which I also had on me a minute ago, so I'll grab another one. I usually end up with loads of tape scattered all over the place. That's what normally happens. Uh, the tape, the pencil, the pencil. Bum, 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 bum. Love me, tender. All right, okie dokie. So 367 millimetres. Now, I know that these shutters are 1,630 millimetres long. So if that's the case, is it possible to get two out of the offcut? So that's about there. So on. Um... Three, six, oh, it'll be close, but might be able to. Three, six, seven. Sorry about that. Whoa, that's really close, but it looks like it could be possible. Okay, three, six, seven. Come to it, I could make them slightly shorter just to make sure I get it in. Because obviously the length is more important than the girth. <laughs> I don't know, I can't vouch for that one, but maybe <laughs> maybe someone can tell me. Oh yeah. Okay, yeah, I get I can get two of each show. So I've only got to cut three boards. Pre-cut three boards. Well when we pre-cut, that means I'm just gonna take a little bit off the end of each. Can you hear that? That's a staple. Why do they do that? Putting staples in the wood. Urgh, stupid people. Don't they understand that metal burnt and black blunts blades? It's not very clever, is it? Right, so the first one I'm gonna do. It's 367 millimetres, which is there. So what I do is I do my first cut. This will apply for using a chop saw as well. But if you use a hand saw, it's not, it's not an issue. Do what you have. Do it by hand saw, don't matter. So what I do is then, once that's stopped, I'll go and grab a clamp. La 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 la. Will that reach? No, that's not wide enough. Bum, 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 bum. I had a bit of wood round here. There we go. That'll do. That'll do. That will do. So, what I do is I bring the saw across, I lock it off, the guard is up at that point, I push it against the blade, I then I've got this dumpy piece of wood here, which is going to be a stop. You know, it's pretty obvious, really. And then I just clamp my stop on there. Like that. Oh, maybe like that. Sometimes I'll clamp to that, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I might clamp to the back fence even sometimes. Oh, I've got wind. Wind is no good, is it? Oh, there. That's one. I need six like that. And I can get two 
off each board. If I can't, if it, if it pans out not correct, if, that I haven't, well, I'll double check a minute. It looks like it's okay because I'm about 20 millimeters saved here, so yay! Now, my suggestion is to all for these rails, as long as your boards haven't got a horrendous bend in them, I mean, a ridiculous bend. Once you cut them down to that length, that bend is nothing. It means it's so minuscule, it's not going to affect the quality of your shutter. So you use them first. So if you are going to be cutting loads of timbers down for rails, so a long length for rails, for instance, you'll cut, you'll remove or you'll cut out the bend. So the bend will be so tiny, as you can see, this one was a bent board. You know, there's, there's no gap behind there, is there? So you've moved it, but in the cumulative for obviously for its full length, the bend can be a bit problematic, but not for us. No, because we're special. We're British. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I am anyway. <laughs> Are you going to ask a kiss? Yes. Yeah. Scottish. Oh, do you know what? I wish I was Scottish sometimes. It's embarrassing being British. Get carried away, and then you cut that one as well. What you do have to be careful of when you do your first cut from the end of any board, make sure the end is square. I've already actually done that, so it's really an issue, but um. These boards are usually quite good, but you do get the occasional one where they've machined it, it's like, well, it's not straight. But if you've got a wide board here, you can usually see anyway. If that's the case, you'll have to do a first cut and then do your actual, you know, cut to length. Now the blades in here, they, I did a fluid bit blades in this machine before, which are very good, but very expensive. Well, I found another blade that's gone to the market, well, it's been about a couple of years now, as far as I remember, anyway, <coughs> are called Saxon blades. Or Saxton? Saxton or Saxon? Is it still on there? Might not have been. Boom, 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 boom. Come on. Um, and they're cheap as chips, but the quality is excellent. Saxton blades. Saxton trading. That's a 10-inch blade. And that blade has been in there for about a year now. Yeah. No, not a year. Over six months. Six months, seven months it's been in there. Yeah. And I haven't sharpened it yet. And it's done a hell of a lot of work. We can see if it's worked done by the you know, by the colour of it really now. It was bright yellow. How shiny it was. So we now have our three rails for preparation into rails. Aren't you excited? So I'm bring in here this saw. Move that band sort of way if you wonder what I'm doing. Turn that around. Oh, sorry. It's the only problem with tripods in the workshop. The legs always get in the way. So I've got my, this is a uh, CMT blade. That's the brand name. It's pretty much, oh, well, it's a very similar blade to the one through there, sort of a universal. But that one's about 45 teeth. So it's not um, particularly fine. You'll see a fine blade. Uh, like one of my mecha bois or something like that. This one here, this is a nice fine one for you. That's an 82 for 10 inch. So there's twice the amount of teeth on there as on that one. And I usually use it in the cross cut if I'm doing fine work. There's a 100 teeth one up here as well. But they do get into the realms of being expensive and expensive to sharpen. This one here is a fluid. That's what used to be in that other saw, which is a good blade, and I have sharpened and sharpened and sharpened this thing, so it has done very well. And I sharpened these myself, actually, which takes a little while, but it's not too bad. If it gets to a point where it loses its, you know, its angle and its set because of accumulative bad sharpenings, see, that one's lost a tooth there. Might be the only reason I stopped using it. Um, well, then it has to go to a saw doctor, and the saw doctor then puts it in a big machine, and it sets all the angles, 
all the flea mangles and all this, all the way around, and all, you know, yeah, the rake of the teeth and that. So it's just, um, but sometimes it's cheaper. If you get a good blade, it is to buy, them, buy a new one. <laughs> I, know, I know it's, it's to, oh, I, you know, it's not, it's, it's not really great, is it really, that you find that not sharpening is, you know, but, you know, you're encouraged not to sharpen something. Uh, to me, that's just madness. It's just more rubbish, isn't it? More waste. But, you know, here, sharpening is expensive. That cost me about £40 to sharpen one of them blades here. Forty euros, sorry. And the blade costs, um, those Saxton blades were €28, Euros, including, including delivery. So, uh, I had, obviously, I'm not rich. That's the pro one of the problems, isn't it? Whenever you want to do anything environmental, why is it always more expensive? <laughs> Please, everything's more expensive. Is it because people don't want to be environmentalists at all? Or be environmental or do the right thing? Is it not fashionable? I thought it was fashionable. It's quite frustrating though. Anyway, this is what I use when I'm running timber. So this is like, that's a push stick. So this is what I use. Uh, it goes, I've got hooks on the back of my bit of wood. And that way my hands are well away from the blade. So when you actually cut this, you want to make sure that blade is just higher than the bit of wood that you want to cut. Now there's various reasons for that. If you go too shallow, in fact that's a little bit on the shallow, so it needs to be poking for a little bit more than that in my opinion. Um, especially if you're doing plywood, thin plywood, because it'll never be flat, never be 100% flat, it'll be a bit wavy when you push it through. Or you get the weight of the board over there and it'll, it'll um, lift up in the middle and then potentially a ride over the blade, then that becomes a drive wheel and push the thing across your, into your stomach. Lovely, not. So it needs to be slightly higher, like so, but you don't go too high, because um, what you'll get is you'll get more whip, but also you'll get lift. So we're at the moment, this is trying to push forwards because of the angle, sort of lift and forwards. So it's less likely to lift it up at that point here. But um, if you are, uh, doing uh, plywood, for instance, it would ride over the top. But if it's if the blade is really high, you obviously get you almost at like almost not yeah say eighty degrees. So you can end up more likely to lift at you. So then what happens is the wood comes through like so, do, 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 and then it goes poof like that. It's like if I'm cutting slips of wood, thin bits of wood, because they're so close to the edge of this and the fence. What happens is it, it's, it becomes. Yeah, it grips on the side, okay, they, throw, they fly back at you. That's like they're making like um, glue sticks. So anyway, let's cut these down. So I'm gonna cut the tongue off first, but not just of these four, six. I'm also gonna do the two boards that are gonna to come together in the middle. So you need two straight boards. Don't ever try and attempt, oh God, get them out of the way. Don't do that. If you've got what, a push stick like this with a, like you see there, I've got a screw in the end. A brass screw prefer, that's a steel one in that one. My other one here has got a brass screw in it. Like that one. Because then you're less likely to damage the blade, you see. That's what, I've had a bit, it's getting a bit worse for that one, but. Because um, then what you can do is, you can, when you push it through, you, put, you basically push a little point into that, you can move it out of the way. And your hands are not near the blade. Now, I'm sure there's a woodworker out there one day going to be watching this video. Maybe one of you are. And you're going to be... And you're going to ask yourself a question. Where is his riving knife? Now, I mentioned this in a previous video. And uh, because I do a lot of um, blind cutting or cutting rebates with the saw, um, and the fence arrangement, which incorporates the riving knife, is an absolute nightmare on the saw to get in and out. It takes forever. 
so I, I removed it. So whenever I do ripping wood style, I use wedges, like the old-fashioned way. They've been doing it in the United States that way for years. They now use riving knives or splitters. Um, and the reason why you have a riving knife is what that happens is some wood, when it's under tension, because the grain's all different, you see, um, as it gets ripped down, any tension in that wood can either make the wood bend away from the blade, which is fine, or towards the blade, which isn't good. If it goes towards the blade, what happens is, at this point here, the back edge of the blade, it'll be pinching. And if it's pinching there, it'll grip, and it's more likely to fly the piece of wood back at you. Not a good idea. So the riving knife is important, and I do intend to do a modification on this sort of bales to make it work. I'm just trying to suss it out to do it, because the arrangement for the tilt is a bit odd on this saw. It's a bit daft. Um, yeah, that makes it very odd, because the riving knife, you see, mustn't come above the blade. But with the riving knife that comes with a saw, it comes above the blade and the fence, and the, um, the guard goes on it. I don't use guards, and I never will use guards. I prefer to see the thing that's going to bite me. You know, um, I've been doing it like this all my life. My father has as well. I've still got a thing, it's just. I think sometimes you'll be careful, you get a false sense of security. I'm not suggesting people should take all the blinking fences off and stuff. I'm experiencing this, I've been doing this all my blooming life. And it's like, um, well, you get to know what, you, you know, you get to know your tools, don't you? Well, I hope you do. Oh, I've got to find a couple of straight boards. That's what I'm doing at the minute. That one's a bit bendy. Not that bad, actually, not that bad, that's a good one. And I'm quite happy with that one. So I've got two boards here. And these two boards are going to be the two that I'm going to work, are going to be brought together. So I'm going to pose, how to put it, oh, let's say for instance, if these were the, the boards, um, where the two cut sides are, which will be planed up obviously, I'll make the shirt, let's say for instance the middle, when I put it onto the bench, you'll see in a minute. They'll just about like so, and then, I'll have the tongues going that way on either side to make, to, you know, to make up each show. But these are obviously the rails, so they'll be done with these boards. So I'm going to remove the tongue on these as well. That sounded a bit better now because when I first started the saw, it sounded a bit vibrating. And the reason for that was is I cleaned the saw out yesterday. And because it's a belt drop driven machine, you get all the sawdust that you clean out, it all ends up on the on the toothed belt. And um, because it's on the tooth belt, what well, it creates a lump, so it's got to clear itself. So um yeah. Anyway, so we've got two rails, not two rails, we've got two boards here as well now. One, two. So they're gonna go together like so. So we're gonna have to plane them up, you know, on. You know, the thicknesser, you can do it on a jointer, or you do it with a hand bar, I'll probably just do it with a hand plane. And it won't be so noisy. Because the machines are dip and noisy, they are, aren't they? Oh. Do, 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 do. I've been playing about in my studio. Up, upstairs. I'm hoping that um, I'm getting better at that now. God, it's been a bit of a learning curve. I managed to suss my audio out, I think. Um, before I was getting a lot of echo whenever I played media, like for instance a video or something like that via the stream deck, so like for instance a like video pops up or whatever, um, <clears throat> it's opened up in a separate, separately you see from the actual main software and it created a bit of a echo, but not via the microphones, but internally, so via the electronics of the computer and stuff, and that was trying to suss that out, oh it was a nightmare. Now the strange thing was, the solution was to run two sound cards. And I thought, oh god, I'll have to buy a sound card now for the laptop, the external one. But I didn't need to. The reason I didn't need to, the microphones I've got, which are the Samsung G-Track, I bought a brand new one, um, and then, <laughs> with the going to go in the studio, 
I've been spending so much money, it's just ridiculous recently. I've got to be really careful now. Um, and anyway, I'd um, bought a new Samsung g strack microphone. Just as I press the buy button, what, ha what pops up on eBay? An older version, but another g track Samsung microphone. Now, the beauty about these g track Samsung microphones is they're not just a microphone. They're clever little things, they are. You can plug a guitar into them or another, another line input if you want. You can plug music into it and stuff like that from behind. Really good microphones and sound and they're really lovely. And um, they're so versatile. I think they're way cool. Do you know what I've done? I've come over here and I've with my big rails. Do you know what I forgot to do? Cut the other side off. Oh, I'm such a fool. My body's travelling faster than my mind. You have that problem? Put these two over here. We'll cut them in a minute. Right. So that's technically what we're going to do. They'll go in the middle of those. So I'll just push them up against the uh, square at the bottom. It's not technically a square. It's a rail clamped to the end of the bench. But because it's to the edge of the bench, it's now my square. So it's making sure everything is square. So that be the one. So now I need to open up the other bag. Or bag or packet or whatever you to call it. Packet. That's what it says. A packet. Or packet. Do, 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 do. I hate all this plastic, but I can't get away from it. It's, luckily, it is recyclable. But I do have a little problem with recycling. The best thing is not to produce the waste in the first place. It seems to be it's, recycling seems to be of an excuse for the fact that you're using plastics. Huge amounts of energy goes into recycling. Huge amounts of energy, and not everything is recyclable. Especially um, when these fools who sell you stuff and they want to create packets, like for instance, oh, sandwich packets, for instance. And uh, they, they look, oh, it's, it's paper. You know, they, it looks like you, you're getting a sandwich packet made out of paper. When it comes down to it, you've got a sandwich packet that has a lining in it that's not recyclable. So somehow you have to separate the paper from the plastic lining. It makes no sense. The only sense in it is it fools people to think it's, it's environmental because it's made out of paper. But when you've got, um, well, paper's another flipping issue. Another shocking problem is paper. Uh, 17 tonnes, sorry, 17 trees, 17 tonnes, 17 tr trees will make one tonne of paper. 17 whole trees, just for one tonne of paper. And paper's heavy, because it's made out of trees. It's a bendy one. So got, remember I was doing the opposing bend? That's now a bendy one, so that one's going that way, so I want to make sure that one's going the opposite way. And that one's got a bend going in the totally wrong way. This one is bending that way. So that is going to be relegated for rails, probably, or, or shorter shutter. There's always waste, but I don't waste. I use. That one's really bendy. So I have to open another packet. That one's really bendy. That one's not too bad. See, part of it from, from here to here, it's straight, and then it kicks off. So if I turn that round that way, that can be the edge of the shutter. When you do this as, lot, as, you know, as often, as much as I have, you get to a point where you get to recognise the errors. You know, the um, bends and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's just experience. There's something, something amazing about it, is it, really? So, 855, 427. So, it needs another board on there. So, I do need five boards on each. So, that needs another board. So, I'll have to open another packet. Oh, dear. I might use that with that one. Hold that on. Right. D -d -d -d. That was a straightish one. And that was a straightish one. That, that one's bendy. So that goes that way. Yes. 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 So you're just literally um, trying to prevent an accumulative error. It's not difficult. 
You see, at the moment, it's not going together, but, you know, the other's all clipped together. This one's a bit tighter. That's because there's a bend in it. But you pose the bends, and then it's not a problem. You can do, it's not such a good idea if you haven't got a tongue groove, because you won't be applying the same correction all the way along the board. Right, so, so effectively that, that's that shutter, or will be, and I'll just check out the width. It's 427 total width, which it is, so it leaves a bit of it um, waste on the end. 427. Well, it's actually 475, so that'd be an ideal width. I've got my other little gadget down here that I made. I forged that years ago. <laughs> it's literally like a little, it's almost like a blade on a, you know, it's not, it's only a bit of iron, but you'll see what I'll do with that in a minute. Because what you've got to be careful is, that you, well, you mustn't fit your shutters together tight. And that all depends on what time of year you're making them. If you're making your shutters in the winter, your wood is likely to shrink more in the summer. If you're making shutters in the summer, your wood's more likely to expand more in the winter. That is where it becomes most dangerous and you must allow it growing room. But if you make them in the winter where your boards are likely to have more moisture content, needs to say, they're more likely to shrink. So you've got to bear in mind, if you allow too much space between your boards in the, in the winter, when it comes to the summer, you'll be looking for them. And it's not very helpful. I'm sure your customer will be very happy on the show you will be either, especially if you're prance around in the nud and they can all see your bits. Oh my dear. Scary. You don't want to see my bits, are they? Oh god. <laughs> Once upon a time. Oh, I used to be proud of my bits. These days they're just like, you know, like shriveled walnut. My titties are bigger. <laughs> Is that parental guidance? Maybe. Dum, 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 dum. Right. All in the world's gone mad. I did a video earlier about Ukraine on the other channel. I'm only learning about it myself, so it's crikey. This this runs deep. This stuff does. Not this stuff, but um the problems in Ukraine. It's quite frightening. It's a big worry. Especially for the people of Ukraine, you know. They're on the front line, aren't they, effectively? You always have civilian casualties and anything like that. No, I was watching... Actually, you know what? Um, somebody put a post, a uh, comment on the other channel. And there's a, there's a, there's a historian guy. He's got about 700 odd thousand subscribers. And he's actually really good. Um, historian geezer. Or talking about the war, basically. The potential war. Um, or the problems in Ukraine. Quite explaining the nitty gritty about it. It's, the guys, I don't know if anyone knows. Aha, that's a good one, that's a nice straight one. So that'll be an edge board. Um, I, I, yeah, I want them on the floor. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a Andy or Adam, or Adam's, Adam's something. Uh, literally something. Uh, yeah, uh, not something as I don't know his name. No, it is, yeah, he calls himself Adam something. And I was watching this video earlier on Ukraine, somebody advised me to watch it. Very, very informative. It gets to the nitty gritty of it. Definitely worth watching. And he just posted it today, so. So that one's a bit. I'll find a nice straight one, that one, isn't That one's. Wasn't too bad. The one, two, and your mumble board. Because it's five on each side. That's not too bad. It's a little bit bent that way, though. That one's not. Instead of doing that, it's doing the opposite way, which isn't very helpful. Right there. That one's very bent. Yeah, I thought that was, that one was straight, but I was looking the wrong way. Oh, that one's good. That's a good one. Hang on it. You see that one here? How much higher that is to that board? But those two, which are straight. No, see that was posed. So I'll uh, straighten them up. So what I do is nothing. I, oh, something I haven't done actually. I need to put two more. I know this is straight, or ninety degrees to this rail at the end. So I need two stops, I need one there and about one there will do. So I set that to a board. So I'll cut the bits of wood, clamp them on. One will do actually, they're sort of a bit this long. About here, that'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. 
slat. This is actually the, these are slats that I prepared for an old set of chairs. Well, I've done two. I think I've got two more to do. Um, garden chairs, which is, they were all metal chairs, and with uh, used to have fabric on them, but the fabric deteriorated, you know, and as it does, and uh, decided to make wooden chairs instead. I've done two. Look really good. It's quite weathered now, mind, but I need to do the other two. So um, a couple more clamps. I reckon I'll get away with the four inch clamps, which were there. They can't, oh yeah, cut my eyes, I'm going. Do lolly. Oh, I'm visiting the UK. Oh dear. Don't really want to, but I've been sort of told to. I've got to visit, the, see the kiddies. Not because I don't want to see the kiddies, but I just don't want to go to the UK. <coughs> I'm going to worry about going to the UK. It's just that I've just got a bit of, um, Bit of a disdain towards it now. Uh, but I'm going to be I'm going to be streaming that on the other channel. I think. See what I can find. See what's happening in the High Street because it's been five years since I've been back to the UK, and that's when I buried my father, and he was a Brexiter. I should have chucked him in the wheelie bin. <laughs> oh. Man. Very talented man, but not much empathy for those who are struggling. Okay, I'm to say that's probably about right. That's near as damn it. Yep, that's good. The eye never fails. So now I've got something to push these all up against now. And that's the easy way for me to make sure to bring all the boards together. And that's where the clamp comes in. But all up as tight as you can go and clamp it all up. And then you, oh, I know, oh, that's it, now I stick all the rails on and it's done. No, you don't do that. Because if you do that, you're going to have a problem. Especially if you made your shutters in the summer. Because there'll be no room for the shutter, for the actual wood to breathe, you know, to move. And breathe. But I just, I, what I do is I first clamp them all up, just so I've got, I know I've got them all together. Like so. So let's bring them all together like so. La 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 la. Got my four hammer Glasgow. If you um work with plastics or anything like that, you'd have a four hammer like that one. That's why I bought it anyway. They got replaceable. You got the nylon and you got the rubber end. And the bit about them is, it's when you Bagging in those plastic or plastic top nails that you use in um, plastic, you know, doing plastic facial work. You don't mark the, the plastic heads, you can still drive them in. That's why you have that for. That's why I bought it originally a long time ago, my full hammer, but now I just use it for shutters. You could use a hammer, really. It's not be good on the face of your shutters. So I'm quite happy with that, that's looking good. I need to bring it in a little bit closer on the end here. I've got to make sure everything's together and then I relax it. No big clamp. Now these are big F clamps. I don't know what the brand of this one is. Coiffe, I think it is. But that one over there is a, um, a Revix, which is a French brand. It's probably French as well, but I bought off somebody here in France. I only had one, so I bought loads of clamps over me. But since I've been here, it's just, needs, it's just so handy to have a few more. So if any clamps come up for sale, I'm, I'm there. Not quite so much now because my woodworking business has been suffering somewhat since the uh, infamous Brexit. And like in Spain, you know what I thought to do? These two boards here, the centre ones, I'm supposed to plane them first. So I've got a choice. I can either wait and do it, because I'm narrow shutters, I could do it afterwards. So I'll do that afterwards. But normally, I plane the edge of these smooth before I put them together, but because I forgot, because I'm an umpty, <laughs> I'm an umpty, I'd, uh, I'll leave it at that. So they're all together, so I'll leave it there for a second. Now, make sure it's up against that rail, make sure everything is perfectly square. What's happening over there? I shouldn't stop, that's probably the clamp. No, it's not the clamp. Oh, it's the handle of the clamp. The little, tea, the little bar on the clamp, stop it, there you go. Ah, 
That's good to tap the end one up again because I've got moved it over. Now when you tap, when you tap lightly, you've got like a dead a dead tap. You've got to whack, whack, whack. So what happens is I just bounce on that end and then come back at you. So you feel you're tapping it up and all you're doing is moving it outwards. It's the same way you adjust the um, blade on a plane, on a wooden plane. So such as this little plane here, to adjust that, um, How you how you just oh you just tap it on the back. What that does is that move it back. So it's quite clever. So what you do so to, yeah so, so to retract it you move it tap it on the back here. But to actually knock up to actually get the blade down deeper you just obviously just tap it there on the end of the blade or the plane iron. In the olden days. In the olden days. I'm dropping things on the floor over there by the way. Oh. Right. Right, so the next thing we need to do is prepare the rails. I've got to make a couple more cuts, so I'll bring it back over here. Actually, let's see what you guys say anyway. Dun, dun, dun. I do blab on, don't I? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, Glasgow, you're a tool? Okay, mate. <laughs> oh. Nothing about a tam or, or a tool. Did I hear my name? Yeah, that was, oh, I was talking about, was I talking about Glasgow. If you were doing plastic work, like facial work, you'd be, you, you'd likely to have a hammer like this one. A four hammer, you know, a four hammer, like that one. So you don't mark your plastic top, you know, the plastic dome name, nails. You get the stainless steel nails, don't you, the moulded on plastic heads. You'd have a hammer like that to bang them in. <laughs> and they've got replaceable, you know, screw in and what, yeah. That's what we call a four hammer. You might, you put, you, you know. I don't know if you've done any plastic work. I know you do uh, you fit the windows and stuff, didn't you? But if you like uh, doing uh, facial work, for instance. Oh. So, guys, you're infamous. Hey, Chester, Steve. <laughs> hey, Matty, my son's here. Oh. Matthew says, I have a job for you when you get back. Okay. <laughs> I bet you have, mate. <laughs> oh, didn't see you there, mate. Hope you're well, Matty. Uh, P. Dyer says, most things are not recycled, but downcycled. Yeah. You, um, you had a plastic bottle that becomes a plastic bag. That may become a park bench, and then it goes to waste. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a, that's a valid point. Bench boy, hello there. Hope you're well. Go watch the, oh, is it the Five Nations or something? I don't watch rugby. Alamo Green. <laughs> oh, you're cooking. Oh, what are you cooking, Mo Green? Oh, I like a bit of cooking. Staples are from the cables they use to tie a bunch of boards together. Ah. Ah. Tell that to I know what you're referring to. Right, anyway, so um, we've got to get these rails done. Then I'm going to mix my glue up. But I've got to prepare the rails first, which means a bit of rail work. And it's got to make them nice. Because at the moment, they were just, they're literally just trimmed down pieces of Verde board. But I've still got the groove. I, had, I took the tongues off. As you see on the side, gone, gone. Don't want that now. So I did the other two rail, uh, the two boards, because it's already set to width. Just take the tongue off. So that made, that made sense. So now I need to flip this over, and now remove the groove. So we don't need that. And then we will plane them down, or I could run them through the thickener. Do both if you like. I don't mind. So that should be about right. I need my little push stick thingy. So I've done the first pass, but ain't quite enough. The thickness would probably remove that, to be fair, but I'll just take a little bit more off. So all I'm going to do is just release the handle on the, on the fence, just tap it a couple of times, and just watch what's happening at that end. Probably about enough. As you tie it, it tends to move closer to the blade as well, because it's dragging at the, the top end. Have a look.
Mach's gut, dann lass noch. Das neun, no way. The beauty about this design is when you're running a bit of wood through. Now, remember what I was telling you earlier about when you push a bit of wood through, the top can flip up. With this design, that doesn't happen. You're holding that down as well, you know, across your length of wood as it passes by the saw. Ah, oh, that's so annoying, does that? Oh, turn it off. People are watching. Don't do dangerous things when people are watching. I don't really do it. Yeah. I could put the zero clearance on, but I'm not going to. Because then you just end up with those jamming up the sawdust. I've only got one more cut there to do anyway. So now we've got six of these rails. After all that, I hope you need six. <laughs> so I'll grab them. That's six of those. One, two, three, four, five, six. So all in that, it's just a little bit of wood now. But the next stage is we... Well, we've got to remove this. We can't, I can't supply it the customer, can I? With all that roughness like that? No. Not at all. It looked terrible. I'm going to try and paint them, they'll be all fluffy. So, I can either do it with a hand plane or I can do it with the thicknesser. We'll do it with both. I'll show you both. We'll do a couple of the hand plane first, and then we'll do the rest with the thicknesser. Right over there. You don't need a head cam, that's it. I know, yeah, I'll find a way of mounting the thing on the head, but it'll probably be really wobbly then, won't it? So, I've got to use my wonderful voice. I had donkey's ears and it was donkey years old when I bought it and it was broken. I fixed it. I don't like checking things away. People keep criticising me. Oh, I see you've got a uh, right hand drive car. Well, I'm not going to change my car. Not if I don't need to. It's wasteful. It's like I can't afford to anyway. If I was going to change it, it would be for electric. If I could afford to. But I can't. So there you go. So it's a number seven, Stanley Bailey hand plane. So you see how smooth that is with that? I've sharpened it since the last time I used it. So you see it's how smooth is that? Good. I just flip it over. Oh, I flip it over and pat the other side. Right. Now, if it's doing that, in other words, not taking anything off, either it's really hollow, which I don't think it is, or the pine has done that. It's jammed up behind the blade. So we do, you've got to clear that away first. That's the only problem when you're playing with pine. And also, actually, no, that's because the blade's moved up. Plane iron moved up under resistance. So there we go. That's one. Do you know, I love using the hand plane. There's something about it. And that's actually quicker than using the machine. For this job. Well, physical. Look at that. Lovely. It's like a spring. <laughs> you can make some lovely earrings, you could. <sighs> Only on a Friday, that was yesterday. Frank Crunchy. Right, there you go. That one. So I did the other four on the machine. The thicknesser. Which is my multico fixer thicknesser. I've had it several years, and it was several years old when I bought it. That's a great machine. It's a 12 inch thicknesser. In other words, it'll, well, the width of the cut is 12 inches, 300 mil. It's that old. Yes, it's imperial. I'm sure the Brexters will be happy. Now, they do this in a, uh, in a two stroke, <laughs> four stroke. <laughs> yeah, single phase and three phase. Well, I've only got single phase electric in here, and Part of the reason for that reason why is because we run this workshop mainly on 
um, solar power. So, this, you know, when you think this machine here has been run on solar power, it's, it's pretty amazing, really. So, I'm just bringing it down. I know it's about 90 mil, so I've got to cut it down to 90 mil. And we have this extraction system here. I've got to make sure the extractor is all open, so all the gates are open. See at the moment that gate up there? Can you see it? So if you can see that gate there, that's behind. Oh, I'll show you. It's quite clever. It's quite ingenious, actually. It's a wooden gate that we made. Why we buy them? I and mean, you can make them, eh? It's made out of plywood. What's it? What's this? It's actually got a magnet on it. It's hold it in place. It's just the magnet holds it. That's shut. And got a little dangly wooden handle. Put it down. It's open. You can automate all this stuff. As soon as you, you know you turn the machine on, um, it'll automatically open the gates. But it just complicates matters. It's only me in here, for God's sakes. Don't need to do all that, do I? Used to be me and my son, but since Brexit. I'm going to oh, stop going on about Brexit. <laughs> it's hard not to, it destroys your business. Um, right, so basically that's going to go through there. And it's got to take a very thin shaving of wood off that, or several little shavings. So this is a triple hit, uh, no, double hit on this, so it's not actually triple. Um, but it, it rotates very fast. The other one over there, which is a planar thickness, so it does both, you can't see it because obviously it's out of frame. Um, that is a triple block on that one. But it's only 10 inches wide, but this one is 12 inches wide. This one was ideal for me when I'm doing staircases because most treads are very rarely over 12 inches wide or 300 mil. Or should I say, am I 300 mil wide or, or 12 inches? <laughs> so, yeah, so we're going to run that through. I've got four more balls to do, and we've got to just skim a little bit off each one. I don't need much, and then I'm nice to be finished. So I just bring it down just so the roll attaches, so I don't want to take too much off. Oh! goes through this end. It's like a MacReady's chicken pie thing machine. Yeah, a chicken run. You push it to one end. It's not enough yet. It needs a bit more. So I've took nothing off at the minute. Normally I use a digital gauge that I've got on here. But I didn't turn it on. There you go. It does spill a bit of um, wood when you only do a narrow board. Such, it's got to go such, such a long way. It's a high volume, low low pressure. Oh, and I just remembered my dust my dust extractor, my chip collector is actually full. That's why it didn't work properly. So I've got four, four boards done one edge, and they do it four boards on the other edge. You could put more in together, but it's much fun. <laughs> Did it touch that one? Because I haven't adjusted the cut yet. So we're half a turn, that might be enough. And I'm checking the angle. If I look at it, the majority of the wood is coming up that way. But because there's a knot there, and there's a bit of a grain here, it's actually going in and out, so don't really matter where you, where you, where you do it really. So if it's in tear out, you'll get tear out one direction or the other anyway. See that one's still going that way, that's fine. Well, there you go, turn off, so got, now we've got four. So it's pretty quick when you get going, but there again, the hand plane is just as quick, but obviously more labour intensive. But on the other hand, it's not using any energy, is it? Hand tools are great. I like hand tools. So I've got. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So there we are. We've got. And also, most people have or can afford a few hand tools. Buying big machines like that is a bit pricey, isn't it? So there we go. We've got a hand plane. Ha! This is my lovely little hand plane. Furnished with a lovely curly shaving. See how long that is? See? Yeah, am I compensating for something? I might be. <laughs> right, okay, what do I do now? There's two ways you can do this. I, I could fix these down, glue them on, and say, okay, jobs are good and that's done. You can leave them square if you like. Looks ugly though. So you can fix them on, you can then use a router and do it by hand. It fills everywhere with sawdust. Or you use a router table, which I happen to have over there. With the, well, I think it's still in there. I haven't checked. I bet you have a look. So we've got a router table over here. Tripods are nuisance. Keep getting caught on wires. And I've got a huge mess over here as well. 
Oh dear. And that was very silly of me. I thought I lit the fire, left the boom and um, alcohol right near it. Start the fire. I ain't got nothing else to start it with. I don't, I don't start the fire with that, no, because that's a silly idea. Blow yourself up. Stick a can of gas lighter fluid on there, that'll be fine. What are you worrying about? Just do it. We are quite good here, to be fair, though. We do, um, most, well, obviously, the fact that we heat our water with solar. If we use them solar, we're using the wood burner. And we use a lot of coppice timber for the wood burner, so that's fairly environmental. Apart from, obviously, the, um, the carbon deposits from actually burning wood in the first place. Yeah, they can. So basically what you do is you're releasing the captured carbon, aren't you, when you burn a bit of wood? So what do you do, though? You know, how... You know, <clears throat> what options do we have to heat our homes? We've got gas. You've got, obviously, heat source pumps and stuff like that, but in the winter, quite often, they're just... Um, they still use electric anyway. I need to build a fusion reactor. That's what I need. So this is my homemade rotor table. And in there I have quite a large um, chamfer rotor bit with a bearing on it. And what I do, I have to set that up, because I don't know if it's set right, so I need to check. It's probably been moved from what it was before, because I used to always use this just for this job, pretty much. So I want to make sure it's correct regarding whereabouts, or how much it's going to remove. Let's see if I can bring you a little bit closer to the action. So you feel that you can get your fingers cut off. Oh, no, 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 no. Routers are actually quite scary things because they can seriously, seriously hurt you. They, they, you know, they're not going to just um, cut you. They're going to gnaw at you. They're a nasty mess. Blood will be everywhere. Ooh, horrible. So that is the router cutter. And that spins out around at a very high uh, RPM. In this case, I usually set it around 20,000 RPM. Not two, I've got about 30 odd thousand, but around 20,000 RPM. And I always start with the end grain first, and there's a reason for that. Because if I get any break out here, that'll get removed when I do the long grain. So, so I double check it's the right height. It needs to be, I need 20 millimetres clearance here, you see. And these are 27 millimetre balls, 26, 27 mil. Um, because the, what the wood I use for the um, brace is slightly thinner. The reason for that, aesthetically, it looks a lot better and it still does its job. And I glue all my shutters, ledges and braces, purely for the, because of the reasons I allow the clearance in the actual um, construction of the shutter. If you didn't, you, you cut the muscle glue. So that needs to be a bit higher. I would say a little bit higher. And I have got a... Where'd that go again? Oh, it's like, what is it all up there? Oh! Oh, I never put it up there. What, what, what did I? I've got a special handle, a windy handle. There's a height adjustment on the um, on the rotor table. There's a hole here. So I'm not supposed to go in there. It's full of sawdust. There you go. And I can check the height. Oh, the wrong way. So I've got anti-clockwise to get it higher. That is about right. That's good. So that goes in there. I suppose where it belongs, and then I have to lock it off at the bottom of the machine. It's a Triton router in there, MO1 or something, so I can't remember what it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the what, is it one or the two? Is that, oh, it's a 2000 watt router. And it's quite nice, it's got, it's got this range, which is what makes it ideal for um, a router table, which I made. This is a bit of old tuftle board that I had, kicking about. I know it looks a bit worse, it's not pretty. You look at some people's router tables, they look fantastic things. All these fancy f fences and stuff like that. But I don't need that. I don't use it for jointing because I've got other methods of doing jointing that are better, in my opinion. So if I look at this piece of wood here, I've got a knot there. I'm not worried about the knot, but I don't want to see it. I've got the opportunity to make that my face, which you won't see that long knot. So that that would be going to the shutters, and that'll be the face. I always look down the bit of wood, make sure it's straight, which it is. So I'm going to start routing the end of this piece of wood. One thing I didn't do was set the fence. Now when I set the fence to the roller, I don't set it to the cutter. So I'm a bit with a cut. Yeah, that's correct. I haven't done that to the fence. 
So I'll go up to the capacity, I'll go up to the roller, so I'll roll over the roller, like that, and then I'll bring the fence to the piece of timber, like so. And that way, when I, when I go past this side, I end up on here, I don't end up um, falling into the cutter with the piece of wood, if that makes any sense. I think that's it. Try again. See there where it's burning a little bit, that's because obviously I've um too slow at that point. And also the cut needs sharpening. But you see this breakout here I was talking about earlier. Now if I'd done this one and then that one next, what happened is all that breakout would be exposed. But doing it this way, by doing the ends first, when I actually do router this edge, that would be gone. No breakout. So I've got OSS probably needs I'm probably got a bit deep actually with that. That's fine, it looks fine. It looks fine. <laughs> got all my bits of wood, so let's get the rest of these done. I've got five more to do. Just make sure it's locked off still. Oh it's moved a bit. <laughs> right, choose which side's the best face, that's the best face. Even though they've both got knots on, this one's a bit more open, so I'll make sure that knot goes to behind. So that's going to be my face.
you step it like this, what's the fact that it's trying to peel it away, so you can get this to happen. So you'll be careful, they'll get trapped. Something you've got to go, when you go that way, you need to clear it by coming back again, and then, then you go over again, and then you know, it, it disappears. Otherwise, that gets trapped between the bit of wood and it bends over between that and that, and it, it, it pushes you away from the car. So you just, but, you know, you just keep your eye on it and stay on. the last one. Excellent. Oh, there goes my lights. Oh no, I'm in darkness. That happens when you don't move about, isn't it? Oh, in darkness. Hey, it's spooky. Oh, no, we're not. So it's spooky. Right, there we are. We've got six of those. So now we can look at how about actually adhering them to the shutters itself. There's two shutters there. So we're going to have the rails and then we're going to have the braces. Some light on them. Onto the matter. I know what I forgot. I forgot my coffee cup. Ooh. Okay. I've got some coke, but I don't really want to be drinking coke all the while. It's not that warm. <laughs> right. So I'll just put this one side over here. Now, what I use to set my rails, I've, I've took clamps off now, it's just relaxed. But they're all together. All together. The <laughs> right, okay. Oh, I'm going live tomorrow on the other channel on all shorts. I don't. I think I know what I'm talking about, but I'm not 100 certain yet. So I use this T square. There's several marks on there that you know that correspond. You can see it, it's been well used. This square is made a lot of shutters. few thousand I should think by now. Right, so that gives you my script, my position for the actual end of the shutter, yeah for the end, for the rail. So um, from that I can decide on where I'm going to go. But what I need to do, I need another spacer at that end because it's in the fan with the end of this at the moment. I did have another one of these rails that I made, I can't find the bloody thing. Which was not a T-square, it was more of an L-shape, so it didn't interfere with the end um, stop. So what I'm going to do for now, I'm just going to move this out and put a couple of extra boards in, which I had here somewhere. What do I do with those two boards that I had? Oh, there they are. Just put that between that and that other bit of wood. And then the edge of the shutter is past the aluminium, and then it won't be interfered. It won't interfere with the actual um, T square. Now, usually, I can get these together in under half an hour, <laughs> for obviously, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Doing the video it slows you right down. But that's an opportunity to do a video, isn't it? Now we, I have put a coat of paint on the. Darth Vader TIE Fighter bird box, but it's wet. That's why I'm doing this instead. And it needs to be done as well, because I've got a job. Ah, good job. Gives a job. Right, so effectively that T-square is there. These top bit of tabs up here a little bit. Lovely, lovely jubbly. And I'm going to decide on where I want. I'm going to use the blue mark. I'm going to make it absolutely obvious by putting another mark on there. So that'll be the bottom rail, middle rail, top rail. Yeah, it doesn't need three rails. Little glue there. Just double check this, doesn't it? If I get carried away putting three in, because I'll use that on that shirt if not those, those timbers. There. Ooh.
kind of borderline to do two rails. Seventeen. Right, blankety blank. So I could have got away with two rails, not three. I think it, it's kind of on the edge. Normally after 1.5, I do... No, three rails it is, definitely. Three rails, so I'm going to go to that mark. Double, so doubly awesome, obvious. Yeah. That's fresh then, you see? You have two marks, because when you get to the other side, you tend to um, you reverse it, basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue and nail these down into place. And these, because I'm doing it in the winter, they won't be tight, tight. It just needs to be a little bit tighter if I was making these. I mean, look, together. If I was making it in the winter, in the summer, it would be different because obviously it's going to shrink. But if it does shrink, you see, which it will do in the summer, the gaps in between the wood will not open up so far, you'll be looking for them. <laughs> which won't be very good. So that's going to go on there like so. That's going to go on there like so. And that's going to go on there like so. Yes. So what I need to do, I need to mix some glue up. I use powdered resin wood glue. I know some people say you shouldn't glue them. But the glue will actually fail anyway. Um, I don't glue the, glue the tongue and glue together. You mustn't do that because you've got to allow the wood to move. But I found, in my experience, I've made so many of these things and I had actually had any comebacks. So that's obviously a good thing. Um, on the shirt at the front. Oh, and doors, I'll just come to that. Oh, well, actually, tell you, I have had a, a couple of shots in the back, and that's because I had a knot on them. They, they, had not, they didn't like it where the knot was, and I was weeping. It was, you know, it was hot. So. But you do expect knots in pine. But, you know, just keep your customer happy, you just do it, don't you? You're not going to get a clean pine for the men I charge, you know, for these shutters. It just ain't going to happen, is it? So, OK, I was mixing some glue up. Normally I'd wear a mask, and I've said that before, but I do, because this stuff is terrible for your lungs. Get further away from it. <laughs> so you first mix it into a bit like cottage cheese, and then you leave it. And get on with something else. It mixes a lot easier when it's warm. But at the moment, the weather is cold. Or the temperature is cold. A bit more water than that. And I nail them together. Sometimes it depends how big they are. If they're, if they're bigger than this, I'll, I'll screw them. But these are nailed with 15 gauge uh, nail gun nails. Galvanised nail gun nails. The nails are not what do the job. It's actually what you fit them. That's what holds them together. You know, holds the shut together. It's once they're fitted. Because once they're fitted, the hinges effectively trap the boards against the um, you know, the the, rail, the ledges against the um, the boards themselves. If I was screwing them, I'd put three in it. Usually, I put, I'd put three in each rail. I might do that as well. And plug them. I'm not keen on over putting loads of screws that can, that can cause problems because what happens is if you haven't allowed enough room for them to expand in their width, what can happen is is that the actual little bend the rails and you'll have a bendy shutter. Bring a bit higher. You can't see my beautiful face. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I've got another bot comment. What have we got there? Cheers, Matty. No, don't go and watch the football, Matthew. It's, it'll, it'll make your eyes burn. Oh, so Mo Green just made an Asian vegetable rice. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, lovely jabbly. Yeah, oh. 
I did have a stir fry today, that's what I had earlier today. I had a prawn stir fry. Oh dear, I just froze. Let's turn, reverse camera. Back again. And I'm back again. So I sussed that, you see? That's, that's another thing I've learned. If I, if I reverse the cameras, you know, forward facing, back forward facing the camera, it stops the freeze. Mr. Freeze. Just remove marks. <laughs> yeah, I had, stir I had prawn stir fry. That was very nice. Oh, you use it for window bees? Yeah, of course, yeah. Do put your window bees in there, around the glazing. Yeah, of course. And the double glazed windows. It's a good idea. They're good, those four hammers. I've had that one for lots of years. And I've never replaced the ends. Yeah, but I, yeah, we didn't used to always do like plastic work anyway. So, um, that's, you know, once in a while. And when we had it, very handy. But I use it all the time anyway in here. It's a very good tool, it is too. How's this glue doing? Oh, it's getting closer. No, Cascomite used to be absolutely brilliant. And these days, this last batch I got is a bit shit. Sorry, but it is. So it needs um, extra mixing. They've, they, they made some excuse because of COVID about the, um, the recipe for it. Cascomite did, which was made by Polyvine. And... Um, they ruined it. I think, from what I can make out, they've, they've, changed, they've changed it back again, though, to what it was. I was just unlucky. I've still got a whole bag, you know, half a bag of the stuff left. Yeah, it still sticks wood together, but it's not as good. I wouldn't use it on door construction anymore at the moment. I'll, you know, I'll, just, I'll just sort of carry on using what I've got on other jobs that aren't quite so critical on the glue. It's getting there. It's starting to mix up and glaze up. It's like they put talcum powder in, that's what it seems like, and they've sort of like cut it down a little bit. Like talcum powder. Oh, yeah, it's getting there. It's not so easy, as, not, it's, it takes more work to mix it, and you have to give it more time. Maybe a little bit more water in that. You can overdo the water. If you overdo the water, what happens is that it separates. Ends up being like a... Oh, so what, you know, like, you know, that's curdled, <laughs> that's it, curdled. You put orange and milk together, that's what it's like. You know, a citric with, a, with milk, and it separates. There we go. And nearly there, that's getting good. All right, so we've got my nail gun, which in this case is the 15 gauge. Turquoise nail gun, is that one? Ah, oh, the beast. It's a good machine, that one is. I did have a bigger one for this job as well, but I got rid of it because it didn't actually do a very good job. And the nails are so flippin' ugly, you couldn't get, you know, and the nails aren't integral to the actual integrity of the shutter. It's there to hold the shutter together until the customer gets it and obviously fits them. But to be fair, to be honest, and obviously until the glue goes off. So the whole thing sort of, you know. But this glue is particularly good. It's not like the PVA. PVA wood glue, it just, it's not, even waterproof stuff isn't brilliant against water. That stuff is 100% waterproof because it's a resin, proper resin, not, not a polyvinyl silicate. Acetate? Acetate or acetate? Oh, I can't remember. So the internal one here, where the two come together, where they shut together, I allow 40 mil on each one. Now the reason for that is the mechanism they have in France to shut your shutters, it basically is a bar that goes up and down, but it must have room for it to travel up and down. If these are in the way, we're up near the edge, where's the bar going to go, you know? So it has to have room to be able to move. So it's 40 mil that end, and then 20 mil on the other. Oh, now it's so... I've got my airline up here on the boom. Yeah, I've got, like, everything's on booms. I've got like, wooden arms that come up and everything's dangling off them like this. Really handy until you walk about and it bangs you on the head. Small glue. The TIE fight is actually looking quite good though. I put a coat of paint on it, but it's taken ages to dry because it's, um, it's paint all you had. It's not water based and it's humid. The thing is, water based glue wouldn't last anyway. I hope the birdies don't mind. But I put a coat of grey on it, I've then got to do a bit of filling on it with some um, corking mastic, decorator's cork. 
you know, like an acrylic mastic. And then another coat. And then we can add the extra details on. Right, okay, glue is definitely ready. And then I want my, my ingenious glue spreader, which happens to be a wallpaper roller with some tape wrapped around it. <laughs> Works brilliantly. So basically, if it builds up and builds up the glue for a period of time, you just cut through the tape and put the new tape around it, and then you'll you know, start again. It works and it makes it. F the thing about glue is when you do woodwork, well, I hate to see people get the old glue and squeeze it zzz, and they do it on the other face zzz, and they expect it to go together so all those surfaces are mating, but they don't. What happens is you end up with voids everywhere. But when you use a roller like that, you're doing your surfaces even and you're more likely to get a nice even glue coverage and a better glue joint. So, basically, basically, I've got a bit, I've, I've racked some glue on here, like so. And then I use the roller and I make sure I've got even glue coverage over the width of the actual board, which is pretty much there. I use make sure there's a little bit extra on the ends, they're the most vulnerable. Then that. Oh, there goes my compressor! Oh, it's getting ready, it is, to get those nails in. And then I grab another one and do the same with that. Now this glue takes quite a while to go off at the moment in this damp atmosphere. In the summer, it's, it's hard within an hour, to an hour and a half, because of the chemical reaction, you see, when the, the water-activated glue. Um, water-activated resin, sorry. In fact, I suppose it's similar to what they use when the, uh, they bandage your legs up. After you get up, after you get up. <coughs> yeah. That one's a bit gappy. No, that's all right. That one's a bit <coughs> So it's still on the hoover. Hoover in, let's just double check that's together. I don't want to do them hard up like I said earlier. But I need to make sure, I need to make sure they're actually, they're actually in the grooves. So we, if we have, because we are in the winter period. So it's humid and it's going to shrink in the summer. That's it, that's together now, that's good. I'll, I'll relax it again in a minute. I'll get a couple of nails and then I'll relax it. So I normally use a spacer, but I don't know what I've done with it. There somewhere. All I'm gonna do is tape. Yeah, 40 mil there. And 40 mil there. So that needs to go that way. And 40 mil that way. That's it. So each of them are 40 mil apart. And that allow Whatever, whatever shot they decide to put the actual mechanism on, there'll be clearance for the rail. Uh, yeah, for the mechanism. Put my nail gun, it's loaded with a few nails. Probably got to load it again in a minute as well. Yeah. And what you do is you put a bit of oil in there, which use special airline oil, which I can't see. Madness, I had it earlier. Where's that gone? There. Oh, that was over there. They use uh, airline oil because obviously the, the, the airline tools can rust inside, and also lubricators they don't wear as well. So airline oil, probably just a thin oil. So let's wax nails in. Oh, let's bring it in closer, shall we? Got another little tripod there, so what have I done with that? Get closer to the action. If you call that action. <laughs> right. Well, I'll better check the camera in a minute as well, make sure the battery's okay. I don't know. I think that. Oh, I bet I don't know. I'll just get the uh, battery pack. Bear with me. Get that on there. That's it. So we'll get the battery pack before that battery goes out. Is it 
should be on charge. Yep, it's on charge. Excellent, so we're back in, back in action there. All right, so we're now going to nail. Over here. And probably we've got a battery pack on, you can't see got a battery dangling about. Quite annoying, isn't it? Right, so these two hit this wood here. There's one here, and there's one over here as well. So, hope it doesn't come it'll fall over. That's it, one there, one there, one there. So about 40 mil from that edge and 40 mil from that edge. Pressure. Remove that cramp. Pressure. That's better. Excellent. Now, if I was making these in the summer, as I was putting my nails in, I'd be using this tool here and I'd be putting it in there and making sure I've got that thickness between every single shutter. But because we've made them in the, in the winter where the, the boards are already damp, already expanded, Yes, they can expand a little bit more, but there's, there's enough room in there for them to expand. So what you do is I literally put that in so, and it's, you can give it a bit of a wiggle. Can't remember because I've nailed it already. <laughs> you set firing way below the surface, about a quarter of an inch below the surface, into the boards underneath. Violent it is. Now, if you're on site, you used to have like a pads load. But also, um, DeWalt make a really nice nail gun, which is um, completely rechargeable, doesn't require any gas, which is good. But in the workshop, you don't need all that. You don't need pads loads and stuff like that because you've got you've got power, haven't you? You've got, you know, in this case, I've got airlines and stuff, compressors to do all my powering up for me. So, D4 glue, yeah, that's good stuff. It does. Um, yeah, PVA D4, that's very good. This is waterproof as well, but it's not as waterproof as that um, Gascon White. Glasgow Kess doesn't like going near toughened glass with anything metal. I've had a few oopsies, yeah, especially you're getting those um, glazing strips in, tapping the boat. I have done it metal, but I'm with a hammer and a block of wood. <laughs> there you go, let's bring it back there again. Let's get the other rails in. All right, so we've got rails at this end, so for the next job I do, I've got to make mark the end of the shutter, which is obviously at this end. I'm going to move this clamp Completely. But I don't think that's necessary. As long as they they look like they're together, which they do. In fact, I want a couple there. I might want to relax a little bit. It's got a little bit of growing room then. That one. Uh, maybe one over here. Yeah, there. Don't overdo it because, like I said, they'll sh they'll shrink in the summer. Yeah, that's good. Yep, happy with that. These these shutters are narrow. They're quite narrow shutters because um, obviously there's two of them. If it was a, a wider shutter, if each of these shutters were wide, let's say if it's as wide as this this whole thing is, and it's one shutter, you've got an accumulative growth across its whole width. So you're going to have to allow for that in your rails, but also in these um, you know, your only ledges, but also these boards as well. You've got to make sure you've got enough growing room, so the space for the wood to expand into. So I'm going to first. Little mark over here at this end. 
at the end of the shutter here. There we go. Dragging the battery about. <laughs> you see, this is where we cut those bits off, but it's actually going to be about here somewhere, I think it is, for the actual length of the shutter. So, what I do is I then mark the full length of the shutter, which is 1630. Believe me, when you start actually doing this as a job, and you're doing it all the time, crikey, you can really whack these out in no time. 30 minutes normally for pair of shutters, including the braces. You can make really good money. I was making really good money, then we had Brexit. Destroyed my business. <laughs> Never mind. Better be. So that mark there is the length of the shutter. It's 1.630. So 1630 millimetres. So what I'll do is now. Using that T-square, this one, oh, getting caught up now with my airline. That's the only problem with cables and airlines. Using this, I then mark, push this along until I get to the mark that I normally use, which is the one with the little dot on the end, the little circle on the end, so that's my indicator. And now I do these ones as per I did those. And these ones, I line this one by putting a straight edge on the end and making sure it's in the correct position. And then I'll show you how I then put a brace in. So, yeah, so that goes on there. So that one's correct. 40 mil, so I've got a mark. I'm put my little 40 mil marks on. Let's use a, a rule. It's a much better idea. 40 mil. Okay, 40, 40. That's my clearance for the shutter mechanism. That one's going to go there, and then that one's going to go there. Like so. So we'll whack a bit of glue on there. Using the old roller again. La 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 la. Make sure the ends have got plenty of glue on. There. If you want to put screw, you know, glue and screw it, it'll be up to you. You can do that as well if you like. And I, so I do sometimes, but not on small shutters like these because there's no need because the actual hinges will be providing that additional fixing. Now, in France, there's two main ways they fix the hinges. One's usually, it's usually with like a coach bolt with um, just that bolt arrangement, basically. And, uh, which is absolutely great. But then you end up with all these blooming, ugly bolt holes on the, you know, nuts on the inside of your shutter. Or on the outside, depending on how you've done it. And the downside to that, obviously, it looks terrible. So, there are, I tend to what I advise my clients is, I can find them and I can show you. I can't find them, so I can't ask again. Shut, what we call shut screws. They're like a domed head screw, like that, and they've got like a star. So they're security in the sense that not everyone's got that type of fixing to actually remove the screw. But I, what I do is I put two bolts in and the rest with these, because two bolts will provide that security. Um, and then I do the rest of these. Because it's neater. And also it makes it a lot easier to fit the shutters because you can whack them in and out as, as a temporary screw as you're trying to adjust the shutter to actually fit the hole. So there you go. Okay, that's quite right, easy. So what I'll do first though is put some more nails in. So the nails come in like that. I like the little 18 gauge bra um, brads you get, you know. But um, just bigger. Right, so set up my grandchildren here. I want. Let's go on the other side. Do it. Dee, 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 dee. Oh, I think I failed with the fire. Getting 
cold in there. <laughs> All right, so. All right, now I've got the middle one. So I'll straight, that's good. So we'll split the difference between the two rails. I'll just use the two rails as my marking point. Do, 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 from there to there. Now my 30, so that's 65, 65, 63 and a half. So 63 and a half. No, 64 and a half. Yeah, 64 and a half, sorry. It's the middle. I'll grab this again. And you, you can eyeball that. You don't need to do it. Yeah, exactly. The beauty is you know, none of this wood is fixed, apart from these bits fixing towards each other, but they're already machined. But none of the rails are actually having to marry up with anything else. As long as you put them in the right place, you're okay. So what I do, instead of actually measuring from the edge, just in case they're not perfectly straight. So I know that when that bit of metal goes through from the me mechanism, that that isn't going to be sticking out slightly. I just put a straight edge along there. Can be a bit of wood enough. But I generally have a straight edge. That one's too long. What a meter. Bum, 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 bum. There you go. Two meter straight edge, that'll do. That will do. This will ensure that it's in the correct position. So I'll use those two as my you know, rest against there, then just bring it onto there. I know it's in the middle. So I'll put one nail at this end. Glue it first. Don't forget the glue it, Marcus. Don't be a silly fool like you are. And put one nail in. No more than one at this stage. Double check the right place, that's good. And now I'm um, using the T square again. Generally, I do both sides at the same time, but I haven't, so I push against this edge and make sure it's against that edge, it's square, and then I go back on my nails in. Now the opposite side. Now if I was using, you know, well you've seen me do um, screws and plugs before, and I use this machine, this, this nail uh, drill here, which creates the plug hole at the same time. You can do it either way. Use hand nails and clinch them if you want. So let's glue on this one. I think everyone's watching the rugby. Won't be surprised. But this doubles up as a video. Anyway, right, so on the other side, glues on. I say some people do and some people don't. You don't need to measure from the middle, or you need to use the straight edge again. On that outside edge. Yeah. Put a nail in. There. Just one. And get rid of that, get that out of the way. La -da 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 -da. Now I'm not a lover of watching football and stuff like that. Never have been, never been my thing. I'll be the one wanting to make aeroplanes, model aeroplanes, and flying them. That's what I'd be doing. That's just me. So. 
I used to play rugby, you know, it's from the school team, but um, I want to say I really enjoyed it. That was fun. It's quite nice to do some things competitive, but I was always a bit of the oddball. Right. Okay, so now we've got all our rails are attached, and the next stage, get the out of the way, is we, we need to think about these braces. Now, the, the braces are something that some people get a little bit caught out with. They're, you know, a bit troublesome for them. It's a bit like, oh, I can't do that. Or they, they cut their joints and they look absolutely awful because they don't know how to do it. And it is actually quite simple. But I make a jig. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> All mine are made with jigs. Well, it's for the marking purpose. Uh, I just need to go and get some timber for a brace, just to show you. Oh, I won't be long. Oh, somebody's brought me a coffee. Can't be bad. Hello, Emily. Thank you, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. Sorry. All right. Now, I'm a bit short of Tim. I, I, I did try and get some the other day when I picked this timber up here, but... I use a thin material, I literally use floorboarding for my uh, braces. But I can't actually get any at the moment because they've got any stock. But what I'm going to explain to you first. So I'm going to use a piece of this, just so I can show you how to do a brace. <clears throat> well, what we're going to do, first of all, is explain why do you need braces. I'll tell you what, let's move a bit further back. I can explain a little bit better, just in case you didn't know this. I'm sure some people already do. But in case you didn't know, why do we put braces on our shutters? It's an old fashioned technique. It stems back when people used to clinch nails. You know, when you clinch nails, basically, you've, you nailed right through your, your bit of wood and you bent the nail over on the other side. That's clinching. But there's no glue used then at all. It's all clinched. Now, the problem with that is they can move. And it's fine that they move, but you don't want to be moving in a fashion that they end up sagging. So the weight of the shutter can potentially make it sag. So if I grab my body bar side, which is actually a shutter, I'll better demonstrate. Here's one I made earlier. Uh -huh. All right, so here we are. Can I get that in the full frame? I'll tell you, let's move that camera up a bit so you can see a bit better. I'll better explain why you need a brace. Now, <laughs> it's my workshop sign, body bar, there you go. But it's actually a shutter that I made. That's demonstration shutters. If you've seen the pictures on my website, this is actually the shutter that's been painted several times to do those pictures on the website. Two different colours. <laughs> it's the same shutter. But, um, so, these are your ledgers. And that is your brace, hence ledge and brace. Now, the point is that you want to stop that shutter from sagging. Without the brace and without any glue or, you know, really strong fixings, that shutter is going to effectively go trape side. It's going to zag, sag, 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 sag. So this is a fixed point. If this was hinged on this side, it's the fixed point. And the weight of the shutter is all here. So you've got the load, you know, a thing called gravity. A very clever man called Newton advised just about that. Yeah, it wasn't Donald Trump. And um, so the gravity is at this point here. So the load is there. So potentially it's trying to pull down to earth all the time. But if you've got a fixed point and there's room for it to move, you're going to end up with a shutter shaped more like that, more trapezoid, um, which is not very good because the likelihood is it's not going to fit into the hole it's meant to go into and they're not likely to fit together. You have a gap at the top and not at the bottom or something stupid. Do you know what I mean? It would just, just be an absolute mess. So you put a brace in. 
And this brace head is, is a structural brace. And what that does is it transfers that load created by the gravity and obviously the weight of the item itself. It goes down to here, down, 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 down to a fixed point, which is the next ledge. So that's what happens. That prevents that shutter from sagging, hence ledge and brace. You can prevent it in other ways. Some shutters in France will have a metal rod going all the way through and they'll just have ledges. That's quite common as well, it's fine. The other way you can do it is you can do a thing called, um, you can put a channel in effectively and you set the rail into the wood. That's a water trap that makes the shutters rot faster, but it's actually really neat. It looks good, but it isn't actually that good, they rot. That's the other reason why I like to glue the wet back of the, the rails the way that I do, is that effectively you're sealing the back of the rails with resin glue, less likely water is going to ingress from behind. Whereas if you didn't put anything there, and it's just like a, a PVO, no glue whatsoever, the water is just going to get trapped behind there with like a capillary action and um, rot the shutters from behind. So yeah, so that's what it is. So you've got your ledges and your braces and the idea of that brace is to pass that load down to a fixed point. Now, if you see it where you're going the opposite direction, that is incorrect, wrong, correct to the, to the hinge, yeah? So that's basically why we have it. And that's what we're gonna do on these shots. In this case, we've got, instead of two rails, we've got six. So there'll be four of these instead of two. If it's a double shutter, that is. So I'll put my sign back. I better put my sign back. Oh dear. Back on the wall it goes. Here's what I prepared earlier. New Peter style. There you go. So I want to show you an easy way how I cut that brace. Because usually you've got people coming stuck. I can't do all four of them on, the, on this shot at the moment because I don't have the wood. Because I didn't have any in stock. And that's probably the fact that everyone's buying everything up. And if you're talking about material prices, yes, wood has become more expensive. This has gone up by 75%. A pack. This um, Vole lamb. So it's quite. Yeah, you know, I, I marked the job up to cope with it, and I explained to the customer. So that's fine. They understood. But it's just a thing. But in the UK at the moment, you can either got two to three hundred percent increases in the cost of timber. Some plywood. You know, I've seen some prices of plywood, especially for the bills merchants, can be as much as eighty pounds for a sheet of plywood. Not marine ply either. It'd be blooming um, WBP. You know, just external grade plywood. Um, I have seen it actually, MDF has gone up as well. That's got about 60, 70 quid a sheet. But I have seen it in B&Q online at time. It varies. It's like, it's like watching the price of gold go up and down. In the UK, that is. But here, the prices, they have gone up, but by no means as much. It's like the inflation in France is much lower than the UK, it's about 4% here at the moment, which is bad, but not like the UK. So, yeah. Anyway, that's what you're saying. That's what you're saying, I'm with my glasses, I need my glasses back on as well. Oh dear. I want to see. Paper has gone up in price too. They are on strike. In f oh, are they? I didn't realise that. Because obviously Finland supplies a lot of the softwoods um, in the UK, but also in, here in France as well. But France has obviously their own supply. Um, that's okay. So you can look at forboybar.com. Oh, if you want my address, Glasgow, I, I'll, I'll give it to you by, by all means, mate. I'll send it on Discord. You don't do that, no worries. I trust you. <laughs> I don't trust everybody, but I, tr I do trust you. To be fair, I trust most people in here, to be honest. I say most people, but it's just because I, I don't, do I know everybody? Hey, but hurts. Yeah. Oh, cheers. If this is more fun, oh, well, I'm glad about that. I'm making a shutter. It's a French shutter, because it's in France, made by an Englishman. who's embarrassed to call himself English. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Glasgow, do you think I'd get away calling myself Scottish? With my Norfolk accent, no, I don't think it'll work. I'll, I'll have to practice a Scottish accent. I might get away with it then. They might, I might, they might have more respect for me then. To be fair, I don't have any problems there anyway. To be honest, 
everyone we know is lovely. So I do these at 60 mil, the um, braces in width generally. On the door shutters, I generally make, I make them a little bit bigger. So. I'll wear a kilt, I've got a problem with a kilt. Zero nine, oi, 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 oi. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this down to size. Um, hopefully, I can get some more wood next week so I can finish the job because I've got quite a few shutters to make. So I'm going to rip this down and make it a bit thinner because it has to be 20 millimeters thick, not 26. But if I get this one ripped down, at least I can show you how I do my braces. And it's actually how I mark my braces out. It's actually really easy. It just, yeah, when you know how, it just simplifies things when you know how. I don't need to use a measure. I know that from the blade to the edge, there is 60 mil. That's near enough for what I've got to use it for. So now I've got to plane that down to make it a little bit thinner. So this is the material I'd normally use for my braces, which is just literally pine 20 mil. Well, it's actually about 21 mil um, pine. But the thing is, at the moment, it's way too, too thick, isn't it? So we will take that over to the thicknesser and thickness that. Oh, over to the thicknesser. Off for his head. I'm going to plane that side here through here. Oh, mm. Should I do it on the machine or use your hand? I'll use a hand plane. I just fancy using a hand plane. <laughs> because I can. So I will. Oh, like a child I am. Right, so I'll get up to 26 mil because I know it's the thickness of this. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Blocked. That is definitely blocked. Bugger. Let's use the hand plane again, just because I can. So I'm going to, through there. Right. I checked the direction of the grain. It's going up that way, most of it. Da, 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 da. Oh, my beautiful Stanley Bailey, number seven. Join to plane. Oh, I just keep on going, I could. Oh my giddy arm. Oh, oh no, that's too saucy. Oh, stop me. I do like a, t a sharp tool. Not a pointy tool, no. A sharp one. <laughs> right, there you go. How good was that? I, I don't know what. I need a baby cam. Like a little camera attached to my hand plane. That could be my Bailey. Actually, there's a video on my uh, on this channel actually called Bailey Cam. Well, I've done did just that. I don't know if I call it Bailey Cam. I might call it Bailey Cam, but it's, it's literally you know because yeah, it's a Stanley Bailey Cam plane. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do the long side. So that could be the back because it's a little bit of crappy. Well, no, actually that will be back because there's a big old knot there. So that will be the face. And also, it's got, no, that's right. Yeah. But also that's too high at the moment. I generally have that a little bit lower. But normally what I have, I have loads of material, all the machine up, ready to go. So I do it all in one batch. At the moment I'm doing one bit at a time effectively, I, which, you know, obviously takes longer. I want it a bit lower. Oh, it looks terrible on the, have a look at that one. On the on the braces. It's kind of out of proportions, isn't it? So that's gonna be that face. Yeah, that's good. Thickness of mine that actually needs sharpen because it's getting a bit. I don't normally get that. Let me see that. It's sitting in the light. That's tear out. Basically, it's telling me that my my plane irons, the knives, sorry, on the um, thickness are the sharpening. I know they do anyway because I haven't done them for ages. I haven't done them for ages. So I'll bring you back over here. And I'll probably put. Oh, oh I've. I've and then I will put you a lot, a lot closer. Right, so what have I done with my little jig? I was telling you all about. This is when I cut from. There it is. Aha! This is my my magic tool. Yes, it's my marking gauge. My special bridge marking gauge. Now, one of the problems people seem to have, well, there's various ways you can do this, actually. I'll, I'll try to show you both ways. Right, so you've got, this, you've got to get your angle here, right? Um, I usually go about 20 million from each end, so about there. As long as they're all the same, it doesn't matter, as long as that one's the same as that one, and you're within, you know, three mil, but generally I'll go 20 mil. But how I do that, I use this, and I use that as my guide. I put a flush on the end then, and that goes to the end there. That's my guide. But if you weren't using something like this to actually work out, because it's quite hard, you see, to know where to put your mark. You can eye it up, but depending on what angle your head is going to either side, you might actually put the mark a little bit one way or the other, and you can put a line across it with your rule, <coughs> and then you can cut along it. OK, that's fine, you can do that. Yeah, 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 Ooh, yeah, that's about right. And do that. Yeah, you can do that, but you are asking for trouble. The other way you could do it is with a bevel. And that is a bevel. You loosen the end there, you pull it out, and then, you know, you create any angle, you tighten it up, and then you can mark it wherever you want it to go. Yeah, well, and you can do it that way. But, yeah, again, how do you find or get that exactly where you want it? These are all little things that, you know, mean there's a potential error. So we don't, I don't do that either, unless I have to. The other way you can do it, you can use a square. Such a little engineer square like this one, not six inch one or 150 millimeters. And you put it on there like so, and you place it up here like so, and then you transfer that mark to here and do the same on the other side. Do the same on the other side. Um, there's a problem with that. And the problem, yeah, it, these are all potential issues. Yeah, you know, you're, you're still relying on, on your own judgment, but with this little tool, which are made out of a piece of beach. Effectively, it's a rule. The bridge rule, I suppose. You could nickname it the bridge rule. And it also marks how far I want it from the end of the road. So I just put that on there like so. The first thing I do do, if I can, oh, I've got to fill the room. Oh, oh, I've got to wait. For, oh, I'll use it over there. That's right. I've got my camera stand, which is oh, one of my little camera stands, which happens to have weight lifting weights on the end. So it's quite heavy. So what I generally do, once I've got in a position, I put that on top there like so, or I actually have a little anvil that I use, which is in the other, through the other workshop at the moment. Um, so I then position it on there. So I've got the resistance there now because it's got the weight on it. And I'll do the same on this end, on the opposite, opposite end, and push it up against that in there, like so. So once I know it's in position, I'm happy with that. Got a sharp pencil. This isn't, this isn't going to move, hopefully. 
And then all I do is then do that. Yeah, because that's this, the distance here is literally allows for the thickness of this and the thickness of that and how far away the back boards are. Simple. I'll do the same on the other side. Just mark that. So here, same difference. So if I take that away now, we've now got two marks. Just because it's a simple little jig, anyone can make that. And if you've got loads of, loads of shutters that you make and stuff like that, it just makes life so much easier. Even if it's just one shot, then you haven't got to make a beautiful job of it. You know, as long as it works, it can be rough as old guts, as long as it does the job. But now we've got this bit with there with two marks on it. That one. And that one. And they could be nothing but correct. So when you fit that, as long as you cut where those lines are, it should be perfect. It should be. So how are we going to cut it? We can cut it with a handsaw if you like. We can do it with a bench hook. Let's do it with a handsaw. Add some error into it. <laughs> As I do. Uh, one bench hook. Don't normally put on there, put on the back here. Yeah, I'll be right there. And then, uh, oh, uh, let's use a little back saw. Such as this little tie zack back saw, ten saw. So as long as you. Get your cut right. Spring, I'll tell you, I used to have a little tripod. What have we done with that now? Oh, it's over here. Get you closer to the action. That's such a simple, simple little technique. And it works. And it's one thing I've seen so many people struggle with when marking that, that, that I'm marking them out. Shutters. But that just makes the whole thing, the whole process, so much simpler. You can just make it for your particular shutters. Shutters might be different to these. But the the pro the <laughs> my dog's bargain, but the process is the same. So now I'm just going to cut that angle there. I'm doing it by hand. I normally actually use my um, Dewalt Rated Arm Saw to do these cuts. Now when you do this, what you want to do is you don't want to try and keep it 100 vertical, slightly, just a fraction, a couple of millimeters, so you're back cutting it. So when that goes to there, if there's any um, interference at this point here. There's space for it. Not huge, not the big, you know, don't go too far, just a couple of millimetres. <laughs> that needs to sharpen. Everything needs to sharpen, but that's, you know, it does nice, a nice cut. And it looks like it's to the line. Now, if you go too far past that line, and that ends up being longer. Obviously, the angle's is going to be incorrect. So you have to make sure that you, um, if you do have gone too too far past, you've got to compensate on the next cut. Now, this is a resharpenable saw. I would say this this saw is probably forty years old because this used to be my father's this Tyzak, and I can remember him buying it. And I was only a little, then. I was with him when he bought this. So I've got the glasses on so I can actually see the line. That's a good idea, isn't it? Ah, that's better. I can see. I can see. Light to see. Light. What film is that from? It's a sci-fi film. Does anyone know? I'll tell you if it's a success. I do love films, but I'm absolutely terrible at remembering stuff. I know loads of stuff, but actually when I need to use that stuff, it's not, you know, in my front all over, but it's there, but it's hiding away. <sighs> that's why I struggled in the live streams. So there, there you go. Oh, so it's pro yeah, that's pretty bang on. I'll show you in a second. Let me just put a little tap in there. That is pretty good. Can you see that? Bring me along the, along the joint, give you more of an idea. So you can be all the praise in you see, say great I am. <laughs> yeah? So that's why I use that jig. I hope that's not too wobbly. That's why I use that jig, see? It makes it so much easier. If you try to do that by um, any other means, well, obviously other means you can do it, but I just find it works so well. So simple. Now, the, the other way, 
we don't tend to do it that way anymore, no one does. Um, you would actually have that would cut in there like so, and that would come in like so. So almost like square end on your piece of wood, but you'd be cutting in to the brace to lock, lock the end in so it can't slide out. It's just like that sort of thing. But no one does it like that anymore. It's not cost effective. Unless you've got a machine doing specifically that thing. But even the big guys, there's a really big manufacturing, shutter manufacturing company. Um, not an online one, their website is terrible though. But they make about 800 shutters a day. This particular factory. It's quite amazing, really. So that is, yeah, that is pretty much it. Or well, I got the wrong, wrong way round. It should be on the other side, really. I should have gone the other way. Uh, unless that becomes the bottom. In this case, that bottom. So I'll mark up here because I'm so busy. I'll show you stuff. And I'm not doing the, the sensible stuff, as in like marking that is the top. It would have been anyway at the top of the shutter, so they'll come down that way, towards the hinges. So where it mounts onto the wall will be on this edge. Now I haven't cut them to width yet. Once the glue's gone off, I'll literally cut, run it through the table saw at the width the shutter's got to be on each of these shutters. And then I'll cut the two shutters. As you see, obviously they're two separate shutters. that cut them to width. You can't see there, can you? Two separate shutters. I'll put you back onto the other tripod. You might be able to see better. Oh, sorry about warming your boat, giving you a headache. That's a very, very simple technique. Yeah, people are going to watch the football. <laughs> you can tell the difference between factory and handmade. More care is taken in hand. No, I think so as well. Um, some factories, some, some stuff, don't get me wrong, you can't. Uh, some factory stuff is made really well, but when they do it, it's all about price, price, price all the time. So many corners are cut in factory stuff, you know, to make it viable. You know, the cost of these machines are horrendous. But the sawmill that we use, one of the sawmills actually, um, near San Juan, that particular sawmill, they, um, they, bought, they bought a new saw two years ago, just before COVID. Cost them a million oh. quid. They're not a big firm. It's all, it's all borrowed money, but it's a million quid this saw. Yeah, to mill the logs. You know, it's an amazing thing though. He's sitting in like his little turret <laughs> with his joysticks and his feet are going as well. And he's got all these computer screens in front of him. And you see these big lasers are coming down, marking down the log, and the log then literally, um, the log isn't moving in this case, it's, it's stationary. But then the saws just go, vroom, vroom. And it's just turn the, the, the take off this, make it square. Um, if they're doing beams and stuff, or if they're doing planking, it's just a whizzing straight through. It's amazing. It's just fascinating to watch these things. Technology is amazing. It really is. Um, as long as it's used for the right reasons, obviously, but not blowing people up. So now we've got to glue that, we'll glue this one on, shall we? Um, I'll make it make sense, doesn't it? So I'm going to glue that um, brace on. So we cut, we, we cut the brace and done the angles of the cuts using my little marking gauge. It looks like a bit, of, looks like a little bridge. And it works perfect, perfect. C'est parfait. Now, I'm saying about perfect, perfect. Where, where do, oh, I'll put the glue over there. I'm always mislaying stuff. I'm terrible, aren't I? Da, 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 da. There you go. Just glue it on there like so. Oh no, I've got glue on my top. <laughs> oh no, it's my best top. No, no, I didn't, no, I didn't. <laughs> That's an old bit of glue. <laughs> right, as if I'm worried about that, really. So now I've got about. Usually about 15, 20 mil from the ends. 20 mil, that's good, 20 mil, that's nice. That's nice, that's good. So I'll nail one end. Okay, put the nail going back on. I'm not really kit fan for doing shuts at the minute. It's, it's kind of like, I'm not set up for it. It's all a bit kind of stuff everywhere. So I'll get one nail in here. And angle. Nice and deep. And I'll tap this end. 
make sure it's, got, it's under tension. Because you've got to think about the shrink and then the width, you see, of the actual rails will shrink, and then you have gaps on the actual um, braces. That's good. So you've got to make sure it's nice and tight. That's it. And make sure there's one nail in each board. Pushing down hard at a time, in this case, I'll do it at an angle because these nails are a little bit on the long side. They're 38mm nails. And when, yeah, when you do it vertically on here, you get nearly 20 mil through. And um, how far they're they firing in they halfway through. Quite amazing really. Forcing these machines. Well not halfway. Good quarter. Good six, seven mil below the surface. Let's move that over here. And now I'm gonna show you how so effectively what if you think about it, we've got a shut we've got a pair of shutters. I haven't got all the braces on, obviously, because I don't have the material at the moment. I should have really got that first. But they didn't have any when we bought these um, Vole Lam. And Vole Lam stands for Vole for, as in the shutter, and Lam is basically blade. So the, each one of these are called a Vole blade. If it, the shutters were they go Vole baton. En français. I probably pronounced it wrong, but I pronounce everything wrong, so you just have to, you just have to get used to that. <laughs> so now we're going to do we're going to trim this shutter to length. Yet again, I'll use a jig. I wonder what I'm going to use for that. Now, I've made a jig recently, which works really, really well for it. I say recently, probably about eight months ago, <laughs> was this one. Um, and it's designed to be used with a, a, you know, a particular saw. I don't cut through both at the same time, I do one at a time. So, um, they're, they're marked together. And this jig, basically, it's... Uh, provided I've got the... I see the holes. I'll tell you what I ought to have done. So I can see the line through the slot. I should really put a hole in there, so I can see the line easier. So when I bring it back with forwards... There it is, that's the line there. I can bring it a bit closer again. Actually, that's what you're saying first. Fifteen years of wood. I was pricing a job in the borders for a guy who owns a sawmill. Oh, okay, that's cool. Got a tour. Storms brought down so many trees. He has 15 years of crikey, of wood. That was a lot of timber. We had about two years ago, we had a storm, oh, two, yeah, two or three years ago, we had a storm, a yeah, tempest, you know, a yeah, whirlwind thing. And that was, um, brought down huge amounts of trees. I don't understand where you're coming from. It's okay, as long as you've got some trees to replace them with, but you know how it is. Get down my little tripod. Look, oh, it's over there. Bring you a bit closer, that's what I do, you see? Oh no! It's going flying again. Okay, let's put you in there. Right. So if you really like it, I really would like to get that multiple camera set up here, but um, I can't, I've done it in, a little bit of it in the uh, studio. I can't afford to do it in the workshop yet, and you know, obviously I need more people watching to make that possible. Because everything costs money, doesn't it? You know? That sort of thing isn't cheap. Why isn't that going down properly? Move that one right out of the way for a minute. There you go, that's better. Now I do need a new skill saw in here, which I'm going to have to buy. I'm going to have to see if I get one this week. Yeah, next week. Let's go on there. So let's go and grab that skill saw. Because I had this one several years and it's crabbing. It's had it's, it's had it, it's had it really. It still works, but it's um yeah it's it's been dropped a few times before I had wooden floors. Concrete floors in workshops are not a good idea. It's all tangled up for silly. I'll blame Caroline. Oh, it'd be Caroline's fault. She did it. <laughs> Plug it in. 
The problem with this saw, the blade don't run true with the fence. That's a problem because I'm using the GC as well. So basically that blade is not running parallel with the side of the sole plate of the, of the saw itself. But it's such a simple little jig. So all I have to do is make sure that I can see that line in the, you know, in the slot, because the slot running all the way down here. Um, and that's basically, and I've got a fence on this side to keep it square. Just make it that's like a T-square, basically. And then all I do is just run the saw, providing it's, it's cutting deep enough. Is it all the way down? Yes, it is. And then just cut, cut the boards off the end. But you do have to make sure that you support the boards as they come off. Otherwise, you end up splitting the end grain. <laughs> Perfect square end using my jig. And all this is a piece of laminate floorboarding. Yeah, the, yeah, it's basically like MDF with like a resin finish on either side. And like my other jigs I showed you the other day, they have little screws just poking through and they grip the shutter by sticking into the little bit of wood, just a little touch. Not to, you know, it's not detriment to, to the shutter because you know, for start, the holes tend to heal up anyway. Another thing is, that, you know, I want to see it anyway. It's so tiny, it's a little pinpricks. But that way, the end of that cut is perfectly straight. You, know, you ain't got no wandering cuts going on. Now, the other way you could do it was with that other jig that I made the other day. If you remember, I made a jig for a jigsaw. A jig for a jigsaw. Pretty much the same concept as that one. And I was incredibly surprised how smooth the cut was for a jigsaw. Now, you don't normally get a smooth cut like that with a flipping jigsaw. Normally, they're all lumpy. So that was, you know, I thought, oh, crikey, there's much i be more likely to use it. I was quite impressed for a jigsaw. So that's quite a nice cut. So now we do the other one. Exactly the same thing again. Get, we grab the jig. You can still see, yeah. I line it up on the on the line. Obviously got to hang over enough. It's a bit more awkward this one. Because, I'll tell you what, I'm going to move it over. Like I said, I'm a bit, a bit, everything's a bit awkward in there at the moment because I've been doing other stuff, so there's stuff in the way. I'll move that over there. I don't normally move the shuts until they're dry. Always lay them flat. But I won't think for a few seconds, just so I can get that on the end, which it is, good. And now I'll just move it along until I, I've got that that line in the slot. I might put a little viewing window in this, I might make it a little bit better. There we go, what's that was there? You want to make sure you're on the cuts, the waste side of the line. You don't want to cut directly on the line because I think you might even make them shorter. I want them exactly the correct le exact length. Within the middle, or two, or three, or four, or five, or six. Nah. <laughs> Just do the same on this one. So because these boards here, they actually got some bit of support. They're not quite so bad because they're going to sit on top of my pillar drill um, base. Another fine cut you got me into. Right. So now we have two shutters. So that can go off now. Come off now. I'm making this look a bit cack handed. Now, if you see here, we've still got that groove in there. That's going to be cut off to width in the table saw. That's one shutter. And that's two shutters. 
we've only got one brace on at the moment, I need to say. So there's a couple of jobs we need to do now. One is we need to cut them to width, and also then we've just got to clean up the edges with a hand plane. So I think we can cut them to width, really. Don't see why we shouldn't do that now. And the width is 427.5 each. So you that might be, you know, worrying a bit too much with the width. <laughs> 427. So that's what I'll do, I'll set the um, the table saw to that and just run through the table saw. And what I'm going to do, instead of 4.5, I'm going to go 428. Because I've got to run the, run the hand plane over both anyway, that'll probably take up a mil, maybe two mil. Da, 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 da. Right, put you back onto the other tripod. So you're flying. <laughs> well, my microphones are holding out at the moment, which is a good sign. Two hours 36 so far. So it won't be much longer. So we'll fit what we do. Let's spin it around again. My handmade light. <laughs> if I can make it, I will. It's literally just a floodlight. I just, what I do have to make sure is that the actual shirt speed on the camera is low enough to, comp to cope with the um, oh, frequency of the light. So I'm in 428, because I'm going to allow an extra half millimetre. It's only a millimetre then, you see. And then But there, that's good. Oh, I might have moved it. There. Yeah, it's good. Oh, I'm gonna grab a shutter and I'll be back. I'm always pushing against the fence and I only allow the speed of the cut to what the saw can cope with. So I'm not trying to um, force the wood through the saw blade. If you do that, your blade is well, it's bloody, isn't it? And you gotta sharpen your blade or you need to replace it. You can sharpen TCT blades, but you can use diamond for that. Diamond sharpness. Now, once these are, what I normally do, yeah, I, uh, okay, so they're all cut to width now, so they're right width. But what I usually do is I um, clamp them as well. I could really do some long, long reach clamps, which I have not got, but um, I could might, might be to make some, I'll see if I can make some at some point. That might be a video making clamps, wooden clamps. If anyone saw me at Ginger Heights, I had to improvise with a clamp. It was basically a piece of wood with two bits of wood on it, and it kind of, um, that was it, that was my clamp. So let's bring it back over here, and we'll plane these over. Plane these over, we'll plane these bits of wood through. These shutters, sorry. So I'm going to go crazy. I'm on this bench. It's quite clever, this bench, because I made it. And... <laughs> oh, what's quite... Let me show you. Let me show you, it might be better understand what's going on with this bench. Now, th this bench here, which I've made this years and years and years ago now, in France, while well, I've been in France, I suppose it must be eight years old now, maybe more, made that scraps of wood that I already had. 
Tesco's boxes. <laughs> and um, a few drawers at the end. But these. So basically, I've got a piece of oak one down there with these little bits of metal that go into these little hoops that I already had. And that provides me support. So if it's like in line with the, with the device, like so, I can clamp one end of the shutter. So I put the shutter in there, like so. Rest it on there. Maybe it'll go a bit higher. The next one up. Like so. so I'm going downhill, not uphill, with a hand plane. Tying it up. It's quite a good bench, actually. You know, it's actually a very usable bench. Not pretty, but it's usable. I would like a pretty bench, but I can't, I can't really warrant the time enough to, to make a pretty bench. What's the point? You get glue all over it anyway, don't you? So I'm just going to put a couple of strokes over there. So it's nice and uh, smooth. Not my customer getting splinters, do I? No. One more, one more. I know they're likely to have to, you know, reshape them to fit their holes. Just take the edge off. Take the arrows off as well. When I'm using this hand plane, if I don't take the arrows off, I'll tell you what you can happen. You get when cutting yourself on the edge. That 90 degree ends up being so sharp, you know, it draws blood. Believe me, I know that because I've done that. That's one side. Let's flip it over. Flip it over <laughs> and do the other side. <sighs> so, right. Just once is enough, just to make sure it's not sharp. It's just not. Good! I don't want people bleeding all over my shutters, do I? Well, technically they're not my shutters. They're the customer's shutters. So that's the top. Oh, Mark, that's top, that's top. That's good. So I'll do the other one. Then I usually run a bit of sandpaper down the bottom, but you know, the saw cut with that skill saw, just run a bit of sandpaper over it. And I'll whack some clamps to make doubly sure that like, there's a gap behind there, but there isn't on that face. There's a little bit of gap, so I'll put a big clamp on there and clamp them up in a minute as well. Video online yet about sharpening and hand plane. I don't know. I know I did one live. I just sort of showed somebody who wanted to, to see. Probably have a video got edit. I've got, I've got I think I've got three videos I need to edit. I've just been so busy because um, the other channel, all of a sudden, seems to be doing okay again, which I'm obviously really pleased about because. I was getting a bit depressed about the arms because I've put so much work into it. Learning so much as well, that's the other thing. And also about the scheduling Glasgow. The reason why I haven't been scheduling is because I did try, when I first doing live stream and didn't schedule, I tried to schedule it and, it, and it, when I live streamed it, clicked stream, it didn't go via the scheduled live stream, it did a separate stream, it made me a bit nervous. So I had, I haven't checked to see what I did wrong yet. It's all a learning curve, isn't it? Now, at the moment, I'm just doing it directly out of OBS, just to simplify things. But obviously, it'd be better if, if I did. Obviously, people could know. You know. And also, at this 8 o'clock live stream on the other channel, I'm trying to keep that regular. I know you guys watch a film or something with Graham on the... Um, on this on this new channel, I really I, don't be wrong. I, I like Graham, but I can't. I, I find it find it really difficult to watch him in his live streams. He just swears too much for me. You know, I'm I'm, not, I'm I've got a sweet tongue, but crikey, I don't swear that much. I I, I don't feel so. Oh, how do I put it? If you're going to use language of that type, I think you need to. Uh, it needs to have that add value. That's, I think that's what it is. 
But if you do it all the time, I feel it kind of loses the um, authenticity of it. And believe me, I do know Graham now. So it's kind of, yeah, it just doesn't feel right. Um, anyway, so I check in on his, on his um, videos afterwards sometimes and then I start watching them and then I decide not to. He's just swearing all the while and I don't like it. And also, sometimes I've got kids in the house, so I don't, I don't really want them to hear it either. Um, right, that's to get clamps. That's it, that's what I do next, clamps. Right, uh, I'll use, I'll use these ones. These will do. Or shall I use the G clamps? Oh, I can't decide. I've got too many clamps. Decisions, decisions. So I'll use G clamps because they're better. They've got, they've got a bigger foot. And I'm only going to put them where I need them, on the ends of each of these braces. Usually what I do, I usually clamp a whole load together, that's what I normally do. But I make sure that all, if I put four clamps on, that all four clamps are the same on each corner. Otherwise, you're potentially going to make your, um, put a twist in your shutters or bend in your shutters. You don't want to do. Did you watch Constantine the other night? Or was it something else in the end? Ah, my foot! Da, 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 da. Is my yeah, microphone still on? <laughs> so I'm just clamping these down just to make doubly certain of it. Yeah, you know, it's not as I'll be using the bench to, over you know throughout the night. So I'll just um, clamp these and just leave, leave them to do their thing. Normally, like I said, I'll be putting them to one side so I can get on with the next shutter. So I'll be using my other bench. I have the first set of shutters. I always usually start. This is actually not the biggest set of shutters on this job. I usually always start the biggest set of shutters, unless they're door shutters. So I do them first, and then I clamp all the other shutters down on top of each other. So if you have like, if you have up to um, five pairs of shutters, some, also actually more than that, you sometimes five, five, five to maybe seven pairs, all stacked up on top of each other, all clamped together, pushed all, squeezing all the rails together. That way, they use a lot less clamps. Now it's a couple of small clamps in there. I will use a little longer each ones. I can find them. Just make sure I've got contact with the glue. As you do. <laughs> I did worry about Graham quite a bit actually when I was um, on Ginger Island with him because he's stressing himself out the big time he was. But also, um, he was losing subscribers. Crikey, I've got nobody's business. I think it's because he's swapping, maybe because he's swapping change and the people that obviously he may have been subscribed before and obviously he's doing something totally different. So he might. I know that's probably why he's starting new channels on it, which makes more sense. But what he should be doing with a <coughs> new channel is shorts. That would really help him. Because the thing about um, an old, uh, uh, when you start a new channel, it's really hard to get your foot in the door. But if you actually uh, start with shorts, there's quite a possibility you end up in the short shelf. And then you can gain subscribers quite quickly that way. Especially if you're doing um, content that is, uh, what 
for uh, evergreen content. Short, they're like TikTok videos, you know, those little short ones, so they're about a minute long. So there we go. I've made two shutters in a bit of a long, laborious way. <laughs> There's two pairs there. I'll probably put a couple more long reach clamps in the middle, actually, like that. But, um, so what basically we've been doing, what makes it a bit different, how we not, is that I've been using glue and I'm using nails, not just nails or not just screws. I've used glue, so that makes it a bit different. But the way I cut those braces saves a lot of aggro because they're actually quite tricky to do to cut those braces otherwise. But when you're doing it with that little um, gauge I've shown you, that little um, bridge gauge which I made, um, that just makes life so much easier and repeatable. It's simple, isn't it? If you can make a jig out of three bits of wood, why not you do it? It just makes life a lot easier. So that's what I use for that anyway. Um, and what I use, as you know, for cutting the, uh, the excess off the end is another jig, which is a sledge arrangement. So basically the skill saw, which is you know, the little circle saw, just slides along there and the blade comes through the slot. And wherever that slot is, that's where the cut's gonna be. But because, I don't even know it, so I didn't use no clamps. There's no need. Because with this, you've got these little, knack, little screws, there's a few little screws in there. And because they poke through the end, just a little point there, just a point. There and then there. As you push the saw forwards and the pressure you're putting on the saw downwards, not forwards necessarily, but downwards, you just push it forwards because you're obviously relying on the blade to do the job. Um, and that holds that into place. There's no need to clamp it. It works really well. And I've been doing it like that for years. So it's, oh, I don't think it's wrong because it works and it has worked. So if you're making French shutters like these, Really, really simple. And they're about 1.6 metres long. Obviously, it's more braces to go on, but I'm going to have to get some more wood. So, yeah. Remember the braces, they go down to the hinged side. That's that one. It is the wrong way around at the moment. Look, no, that's right, that's the hinged side there, because that's, that's the bottom. That is actually the bottom, <laughs> not that. So that comes down to a stop point into the, into the rail. There is another way of doing your rails as well. Your right, sure, your braces, not your rails, your braces. I do apologise. Um, you don't have to do it as a double, sort of like a, like a double Z. So it looks like a Christmas tree when, when they're closed. Or when, they're, when they're together, it looks like a Christmas tree. You can actually have it so that rail follows right through. Two separate bits of wood still, not rail, that brace follows right through from this point to that point. So what you have is you use your you use straight edge for instance. I'll use a bit of wood there, that'll show you, it'll be easier. So fucking <laughs> bagging everything from the boat. So instead of it from that going to that end of that piece of wood, what you do is you run it all the way through to this corner instead. And then you do the same difference. You mark here and there, and then you do the same there and there. Um, and then that brace then sits in. So that's effectively, instead of it looking like a double Z, it just comes all the way all the way through. That's another way you can do it with these door shutters, where you've got three ledges, such as these. So anyway, let's see what you guys are saying, and then we're going to click off with about nearly three hours. I always do quite long streams, don't I? Can't help myself. <laughs> Get away from that light. Get light in the lens. Hello, baby! How you doing, buddy? Hope you're well. They are, yeah, live streams are hard to gain traction with. Yeah, the thing with part, yeah, they do, they will brace it. They won't, um, the foot won't brace, but the shoe will um, brace, bruise. Um, the shoe will bruise it. But it's, these have all got we sanded as yet. And what you'll find is any indentation, I haven't crushed them. I haven't crushed them. I just push them together. Um, but what happens is, you, if you, it is a problem for you, all you do is just a little drop of water. Oh. Expands. Within a couple of hours, that'll be uh, expand. But I don't want you to do that because I haven't squeezed them down that tight. So there's no need. And plus, it's got to be, they're all going to be sanded. So what happens when you sand them? It fills all the little, little nail holes as well. It looks a bit prettier when you, when you give it to the customer. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's pretty simple, isn't it? But yeah, you could put blocks of wood and leave, or you can get the shoe cap, which, um Shoe caps, so you can, you can get little plastic caps that go over the shoes. You have, yeah, but I don't know. 
it's another faff, isn't it? I get little blocks of wood, you got to put little, it's just another faff. And it's quick for me, I've got to sand it anyway, and I just go over the whole thing. So you have got a valid point there, Glasgow, but yeah. Um, just don't bruise your wood by squeezing down like a crazy man. Dee 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 dee. -de. Witness for the prosecution on Sunday. Oh, that was const oh, constantly another week, was it? Oh, I see. Well, last Sunday you did. Um, oh, that's cool. Cause I did watch the other one when you had. Oh, what's her name? But two or three weeks ago, you know. I forgot her name now. Very beautiful woman. Uh, Babbitt, but Graham approach gets tiring after a while. I'm not on the tube to get angry. Oh, I see your point. Yeah, fair point. I'm here to listen to interesting people, inter interesting things. Oh, I do a pack. Um, <laughs> do I expire my blood pressure? No, I get your point there, buddy. Bauberg, yeah, I understand that. I, I, sometimes I just don't, uh, uh, I tried. On YouTube Studio, to, I haven't done it on YouTube Studio. I've been doing it on, um, just on the YouTube one. You just click, you know, add the stream if I do it on the YouTube. And it, like I did this here, um, I didn't have our YouTube Studio on the phone. Um, ah, pretty purple. No, do you know what they have, you, Glasgow? Do you know what all those pretty purple things are for? So let's get that off there so I can show you. Oh dear, that was gone for. Um, there are all those funny purple things, the funny colour things on my cupboards. Yeah? It's because of YouTube. And up there, it's because of YouTube. Do you know what I did? I got a sand meter. And I went round with a sand meter, and seeing with a constant sand going in the centre of this in this space. This is, this is the lens you should have to go to when you're doing your audio for your videos. And I measured the audio bounce, basically the echo. And all my hard surfaces, especially the covers, were the worst. They literally just um, bounce the sound back. So each one of these things, as you can see on there, these pretty pink things, because do what they are, the bed sheets that we had um, surplus. So <laughs> I did use them what I got. They happened to be like purple and red. Each one of those, oh, I can show you too far away. Oh, I'll go over here, go to the ones that are closer, makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah, each one of these, such as, <laughs> they're full of fiberglass, insulation. <laughs> That's these streams I have to go to, to try and get the audio anywhere near usable in this space, because it echoes like hell in here. Um, got high, you know, high flat ceilings, you know, the audio's terrible in there. All these hard surfaces everywhere, this sound just bounces everywhere, <laughs> creates an echo. So um, that's what these are. These are sandboards full of fiberglass. <laughs> Same with these funny shaped ones up here. Sandboards full of fiberglass. That's the length I've gone to. And up there, <laughs> you won't believe what's it. Have a guess what's in there. I'm not going to tell you yet. Have a guess what is up there. <laughs> Probably mice, but you know. <laughs> You know, you've got to do it, haven't you? Otherwise, you, you just have a, a sound hollow. I, I've got a funny thing about I play vinyl and stuff, and I love my music and what have you, you know, like listening to it, that is. And uh, I can't stand bad audio. And I just think, so anyone watching videos and they've got bad audio, there's a, certain, there's a certain level you can actually put up with, isn't there? But it's when it's really hollow, echoey. Like I was having problems with my live streams with like the media echoing. I think I sussed that now, thank God. Um, but it's yeah, when I was doing the other channel, but it's I'm playing little, uh, little uh, like I think last one they're echoing, doing little videos and stuff, they were echoing. But yeah, what is up there, Direct? Come on, anyone know? My office craft room is the quietest in my house, it's full of yarn, <laughs> it's like a sound booth. <laughs> yeah, you do um, crochet, don't you? My daughter does a lot of crochet, she crochets me, she crocheted me a penis. <laughs> As you actually did an effigy of me as well in crochet. Now it's not foam insulation, it's actually fibre, it's, it's rock wool, that's what it is, it's rock wool insulation. 
So the, whole, the idea is the sound, any sound waves go into it and it's trapped. So it reduces the rebound. Cheers, but uh, so yeah, I'll try to, but I'm, I'm not brilliant at it. I just, I just want to improve if I can. Um, it's one of the things I used to say about when watching movies and stuff at home. I was thinking, oh, I can put up with a bad picture, I can't put up with a bad sound. And I've got quite, really got a nice sound system, but I've put in a few years ago now. But it works so well. And I've also put in a soundboard, but basically where the projector screen is and the main speakers are, we've got a soundboard just above it, which also you know filled with rock, rock wall fiber um, insulation, and it just it does really improve. Oh, Glasgow plays crochet too, hammer and balls. I bet you do, <laughs> saucy, <laughs> dirty man, typical Scotsman. <laughs> Uh, in processing, it would be yeah. Maybe maybe change that would be quite, maybe, maybe quite nice if you did. You can do videos, you know. You can do really close ones. You're doing all the little stitches and stuff. It's quite amazing. What thing I like about crochet compare, in compare uh, comparison to knitting you're, you're creating something from a single point you don't necessarily have to stitch loads of stuff together do you it's quite amazing when i was watching the asthma make some of this stuff and she's getting really good at it as well yeah i've seen some of your stuff and that you know I, I like your um avatar that's pretty cool <laughs> uh -huh. no not foam insulation guys go that isn't that in there it's rock wall in the walls, but ah, you're referring to the, the thing above, yeah. Click my profile pic. Ah, oh, I see. Yeah, I use, I use YouTube Studio on the PC all the time. Audrey Hepburn, that's it, Audrey Hepburn. I would do a full length brace and cut the ledge. Oh no, we don't generally cut, I, when I do, I cut the brace. When I do it, you do it either way, to be honest. The problem is if you cut the ledge, you've, you've lost your, um, the strength laterally across the actual, and all the braces really doing is trying to stop the shutter from sagging. It's not trying to hold the shutter together necessarily. Crochet and sewing. Oh, Patrick H, how you doing, buddy? Uh, gives you eye strain. Yeah, I'll tell you what gives you eye strain. is blue on YouTube, constantly editing videos. <laughs> Bugged my eyes, I'll tell you. That's something I will definitely go back to the UK. I'll say back, I'll go to visit the UK. I will be um, going to see an optician while I'm there as well. I've got one here as well, to be fair, but I haven't seen him for ages. Uh, Good evening, Patrick. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what's above there. It's actually a bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a mattress up there. That's what it is. I, I made a wooden frame and chucked the mattress in it, then wrapped it in um, in a bed sheet and stapled it and God knows what else. That's what's in there. Yeah. And the reason for that is having that big one above there is because when I was doing videos above the white in front of the whiteboard, I tried to demonstrate woodworking videos in front of the whiteboard, trying to demonstrate stuff, but I was having a hell of a time with the audio. But I think now I've got my radio mic. It would work a lot better now. I think that would be a bit more successful with it. So I was just like explaining things about how woods cut and you know about ripsaw, uh, uh, ripsaw and timber, and also like things like I don't know, saw and stuff like that, radio saw, court saw, slab saw, um, you know, different stuff like that about different types of trees. Um, but yeah, that was quite. They were quite interesting videos. Like the history of um, Stanley, you know, Stanley Bailey, you know, Frederick Stanley, and. Uh, Leonard Bailey, Leonard Bailey, uh, who came up with the, oh my god, <laughs> bit of wood, it was a bit of wood, which came up with the Bailey hand plane, such as the Stanley Bailey, that's this one. Frederick Stanley, though, he's a right um, tyrant, he was. He used to buy up all the companies, anyone who looked like they're going to be making anything that is potential competition, he'd buy them up. That's what he used to do. Originally, they were a fasting company, but Stanley was. 
Apparently, was yeah, they originally they'd um, make fastings like latches and hinges and stuff like that, and then they went into tools. So yeah, but he was a bit of a, a bit of a sod. He wasn't a very nice man, um, Frederick Stanley. Um, whereas Fred, um, Leonard Bailey was more of a soft soul. He's more interested. He was an inventor, a creator. He used to make, just loved to make stuff. Um, and when the two, they went a bit in business together, you know, for a while, and then Leonard Bailey died. Quite not that old either, actually. Um, but Fre Frederick Stanley had, basically owned all the paintings. So um, yeah. Very, it, was, it was during the uh, time of Industrial Revolution. So mechanisation, what have you, you know. Even other things like uh, the first nail gun. Well, what's that really big plane they built out of wood? Like a troop carrier, it's going to be. Oh, mongoose, the mongoose. I think it was the mongoose. It was because of that plane. It was, it was how we end up with the first ever nail gun. There are so many nails being used in that in the aeroplane. Bloody, you know, it's fascinating stuff, you know. How, how you think how we've evolved over the years, you know, yeah. technology and, and just the way that we do things, you know. We have moved, we have moved yeah. on somewhat, as long as we're doing it for the right reasons. That's the thing. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for being here because my battery's about to run out on my microphones, according to the little meter on there. So that's not very really helpful. Let's see what everyone, everyone say anything. No, it's not the same company, no, but it's, um, it's no Stanley Black & Decker. I can't remember when that's bought out. When was that bought out? When did they amal amalgamate? They bought, uh, did they buy, yeah, they bought Black & Decker. Stanley bought Black & Decker and it became amalgamated into one. Yeah. Oh, you read that? Have you on my website? You've been on my website, that's cool. Yeah, I did a blog about it. Yeah, he's just going now. He's, he's an interesting character. Yes, Glasgow, I am going to be going live at 8 o'clock UK time, you know, GMT, tomorrow. I think I've got an idea what I'm doing, um, but I need to do my little scripts and stuff, so I've got to clear my head, because, you know, I'm like, I'm not happy unless I've got it in front of my face. I've got my new monitor, which is good, so I can see a little bit more is going on. Um, it's quite hard work off a small screen. That's cool. Well... Spruce Goose, that's it. You got it. Well done, Spruce Goose. Hey, I, I, I think I talked about it in that, actually in that blog, actually. On the website, so. Yeah, I know. Black and Degger and Stanley, they're both rubbish now. You can't get a good Stanley hand plane, not new. If you're going to get a Stanley hand plane, get yourself an old one, because they are good. As you can see, that's what I was using. This is a Stanley Bailey, you know. All right. And that is a lovely, lovely, really solid plane. Beautifully machined. I think it's a beautiful thing. Costs you a lot of money to buy an equivalent plane. You have to get like Lee Nielsen or uh, Clifton or something like that to get anything there equivalent to that. But that, I originally bought, when I bought that, it was covered in rust. Um, I think that one actually got off a car boot. I bought that one on a car boot. I'm sure I did. It's a bit of a state. So obviously it needed a complete, a complete rebuild. Yeah, I, mean, I think it doesn't take much really, does it? It's a few knobs you turn on a lathe and what have you, and you know you clean um yeah, and I've got the, the bottom milled. This tiny, tiny amount of skimmed bottom was an engineer friend done that for me to make sure it's perfectly true. It wasn't bad anyway. It's a bit of a hollow in the mouth, but that was all. Um, and then I fitted, installed some uh, Victor forged plain irons. These ones here, these are lovely plain irons. Makes all the difference. I did that one. And I also did my number. Um, six as well, which is that hand plane there. It looks a bit dusty at the moment because obviously everything gets dusty. I don't use my most used plane is my number seven, which is obviously that one. That one there. Um, it's one I use most of the time. And and the block plane, the, 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 the two useful planes. Um, I obviously use my little number four here quite a bit as well. Hence, I set one side to be sharpened. Um, but in here, we've got a few planes in here actually. We've got my rapier up here which is one I've customised into a scrubbing plane designed to plane across boards. So if you join those boards together for a table or something like that, you end up with like a bit of an undulation. So you use a scrubbing plane, which has a curved edge blade. Fantastic for that. And I've got a couple other, um, I've got several number fours like these, all those two inch, two and a half inch as well. Uh, and I've got my number five, which is my jack plane. I've had that one donkey's years. Bought that one on eBay actually years and years ago. 
Um, I did have another one before that, but I dropped it and that cracked, so I think we should replace it. This one here I bought new, and this is uh, this is actually a Stanley Bailey again, but it's before it got bought. It's still several years old. I've had a long time. Um, still in very good order, as you can see. Uh, and that's what we call a badger plane or a shoulder plane in this case. Well, this, well, this is actually sh see that's a shoulder plane. That's a shoulder plane. That is a rotor plane. That's another shoulder plane, which you could also be used as for doing rebating because there's a fence to go with that. Um, and then various block, low angle block planes. And I've got my little, uh, what you call a, uh, a luthier plane, which is a, a plane that, that you'd use if you're making guitars and stuff, a little tiny one at the top there. Uh, there. And this one here is quite a, quite a special plane. This is a compass plane. And the sole is, I'll show you, the sole is flexible, it's a thin steel sole, and you adjust it into a curve, convex, concave. Great if you're doing, um, you know, cabbage old eggs on a table, for instance. Beautiful for that job. I bought it. Um, well, I bought that second hand. Actually, did I buy that one? I didn't buy it. So I, tell you, I didn't buy that one. That was actually, my father had two and he gifted me one. That's correct. Yeah. It was, it was all stiff and ridged up because you've got a bit of problem with these things. See, the can, where you've got the side of the uh, sole plate there, that, that little bit of metal is like a slide. Oh, sorry about that. If I just point to it and show you, just there. It's like a little slide, it's a dovetail slide, and they stick. They mustn't be stuck. If they're stuck, you need to free them up. Otherwise, what happens is um, if they, you'll, put, you'll um, put a tension onto all the little rivets around the mouth, and it'll, and it'll all come apart after a pair of times. That just works way loose. It vibrates and works way loose. It's constant tension. So, yeah, so new tools. Mm, there are some good budget... Um, hand planes out there. Even the faithful ones aren't bad. They're better than the Stanley. Um, the only thing I would say about the faithful hand planes is you will need to do a little bit of work on them to make them really good. But the, the castings aren't that bad. Um, the only thing I would say is you might find there'll be a bit of hollow or, uh, or, or, or raised in an area on the sole. But you can do that yourself just with a diamond sharpener, like one of these diamond sharpeners. A 300 grit will do you. One of those. And you can actually do it by hand. You'd be surprised. You set that in the block of wood, and you, you run it over back to the wood without the blade in, obviously. And you'll see the hollows. You'll, you know, because where you'll see where it's um, smoothing it out, you'll see where it's hollow and where it's not. So you end up with um, the obvious space where you've got to work. And you have to ask yourself, where is it important? Usually around the mouth of the blade, where the blade comes out of. That's important. And this is important. So around this area here. If it start getting a little bit crappy at the back end, there's not quite so much a problem. So if you think about that area then, sort of machine the best you can to get it flat. Or just take it, if you've got an engineer friend, just let them skim it on the mill. Just tiny, tiny amount, just to take just enough off just to make sure it's perfectly true. So um, if you want to keep yourself out with some hand planes, you can do it really cheaply. And it's definitely worthwhile looking at some of the second hand places, like, I don't know, like the car boots and stuff. But you'll have to be quick because there's a lot of people out there like me who know they've got value now because it's expensive to buy good new tools unless you're willing to put a bit of work into them. Um, even that when I was down uh, Ginger Island with Graham, um, he had, well, we bought, or he bought a little number four, like that one, little Chinese number four, come in what make it was. Was that faithful? If it was, no, it wasn't. I think, anyway, anyway it, was a, it was a cheap Chinese imported plane. It actually was quite usable. It, it was um, not as great, obviously, as what I've got up there, nowhere near. Um, but for most people, as long as, as long as you can put an edge on it, it's going to play in the wood. Depends what you want to get out of it, really, doesn't it? You know, I think we can get a bit, a bit precious about our tools sometimes. I know I do. But that's because I use them all the while. So, you know, it's been my livelihood for years. And I've always had a passion for it. I've gone into other stuff over the years. Do you know what I mean? One minute, yeah, well, well, I've always done woodworking. But, you know, first I trained as an electrician, went back to woodworking. Then I started doing plumbing. Did that for a few years. I went back to woodworking. <laughs> whether it be um, on the, you know, in the house, doing a bit of house bashing, or whether it be on a boat, I'll be doing woodworking. So I always come back to woodworking because I enjoyed it, and I still do. So I can't see me doing much else other than doing woodworking, apart, and I'll see the video. I'll tell you what I like, I'll tell you what it is. I like doing anything that's creative. 
And when you make things out of wood, even it's repetitive stuff, when you make a whole batch of shutters like these, everything is, it's that creation that's creating something that is, um, you have to put a bit of your soul into, do you know what I mean? It's just, you know, I know in Glasgow, when you're on site now, and sometimes you're probably swearing blind at, um, at your work, you know, because things aren't quite going, out, going your way and what have you, but you must get sats job satisfaction at the end of it when you step back, wow, we built that, that's pretty cool. That's how I feel about it. I, 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 just, I just like making stuff. And even when, if I have a video, and I made a video, even if it hadn't done very well, and I'm, I'm happy with it, it does give you me that warm, fuzzy feeling inside. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's good. The staff stuff as well. It's even like things, I don't know, there's light over here, for instance. <laughs> I need to diffuse the light a little bit. That is um, drawer protector. Oh, no, no, that's... Oh, and the frequency of light, because it's too much, you can't cope with that. <laughs> Aha! You'll have that to fit, fit uh, no? Okay. Um, it's just floodlight. But it's, it works in there, as long as the, you know, the shutter speed is low enough. So that's why, obviously, if I put shine it right at you, it's having to raise the shutter speed to cut the light out, and then it goes a bit loopy. Yeah. See that frequency? It's freezing the frequency of the light. So these um, camera lights are different, you see. They've got a very, very um, high frequency. So um, they're, they're much better for the job. Anyway, I'm mumbling on again, aren't I? Crikey. Three hours, 16 minutes. We'll be live. Uh, building a house. Top to bottom is a good thing. You're right, we've been there, done that. And, you know, extension, loft conversions and stuff like that. We need a sparky. Get your bum here. <laughs> right. Yeah, oh, there's a long while ago. I got, I got to 17th edition. So I, I haven't done anything past that, so I don't think I'd be allowed to now. I'd have to, I'd have to do you know, a bit of top up. Sandy, they did. They used to be one of the best tools out there. Fantastic things they used to be, but it's just it's become too commercialised. Oh, you got the Black and Decker. Some of the Black and Decker stuff. I've actually got a couple of Black and Decker battery drills. Um, Black and Decker Stanley battery drills, such as these. They've actually proved to be quite good. I've been, I'm quite satisfied with them um, because they're ridiculously cheap and, you know, because I've got my vouchers from the supermarket. <laughs> As you do. And I just needed small drills. I, don't want, I didn't want my big beefy ones so I'm just doing back in the few little screws in. If it, you know, if I want to drill a hole, I'll use something a bit bigger, wouldn't I? So, I, you know, I just want something compact. And it's nice having compact drills. If you work inside a cabinet, if you're doing a kit, making up a kitchen unit and you need to drill in there, you don't want a big old arse thing, you know? Um, you've got something short and stumpy like me. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. That, that, you're right. Yeah, it is nice. It's nice to make something. You're right, yeah, the Havilland Mosquito. Oh, crikey. That was a... I've got a cast uh, alley one on my wall, actually, the Havilland Mosquito. The two booms. That's probably made out of ash or something like that, just like the old Morgan sports car. Well, Dad had one, they, one of them years ago, really old one. That was an interesting thing that was. It had like a, it had built-in jacks on it. Oh, that worked. <laughs> the doggy appearances. Yeah, only when they're, when they're with me. Usually most of the time, but they're not in here. Oh, cheers, Dave. That's very kind of you, mate. Yeah, but yeah, you don't have to spend a fortune on tools. Uh, Kanazuki says, we got battery adapters so we can use the same batteries over multiple makes. That's a good idea. That's really good. As you can get, um, hello, Sega, how you doing there? I hope you're well. Um, yeah, I didn't, didn't realise you can get adapters for the batteries. That's a really good idea. The batteries are the expensive bits, but you've got big old four amp batteries, four amp ones. Yeah, I like Blue Series Bosch. Well, a jigsaw is a blue series Bosch. If you want to saw my last, one of my other streams, where I made a jig for the, the Bosch jigsaw. Um, I do like the blue series Josh, Bosch, Josh, Bosch. Uh, like, for instance, my little angle grinder here that I use. Blue series Bosch. Um, I was actually using it in the sand, but um, they're, they're really good. Uh, you yeah, know, they seem to be fairly solid. That's a really good angle grinder, actually, because it's, got, it's a small body, so you can get your hand right around it. It's quite handy. Handy hand. You know, I said I was going to stop me again, didn't I? Hello, Jasper. Yeah, oh, sorry, buddy. Coming to an end, mate. We just made a shutter. A pair of shutters. So. Mum, 
Mad Monk, how you doing, buddy? My best work was making a shed and t oh, a tiki bar out of scrap wood and using old decking to upgrade both to the garden bars. Cool. I tell you, um, there's an Australian guy. He, he was living here and then he moved away. I went to Italy with him to um, oh, racetrack in Italy. Oh, I'm comfortable with that. Oh, short term memory loss. But yeah, anyway, he, he made a tiki bar and it was, um, it was rough. <laughs> really, really rough, I think. <laughs> oh, you've taken splinters everywhere. Monza. No, not with Monza. Oh, Emola. Emola. I think it was Emola. Emola. Yeah, Emola. I rode up there with well, three of us, me, Keith, and um, Keith's a lovely guy. Another guy, yeah, who's quite frankly, he's Australian. That's the reason why I didn't mention it straight, but he's, oh, he's obnoxious. He was awful. <laughs> God. <laughs> I'll tell you something, you, you, when you spend time with people, you, know, you really get to know what they're like, don't you? You know, in close proximity, long periods of time. It was interesting, say this, at least. <laughs> he went around like he's a bouncer. He's, he's, he walked around like this, he was, like he's a bouncer. <laughs> me and Keith were hysterics. They really were. Oh, dear. But me and Keith are good mates now, so um, that was positive. Came out of it. And we've been back to Italy since. Uh, it, oh, we did the uh, Stelvio Pass on the motorbikes, which was fantastic. Uh, Amola, Amola, I'm sure it's Amola. That was a um, oh, that was like a, a meet up with loads of uh, vintage motorcycles and yeah, racing, all the old old school. One of them nearly died while he's there, not because he was racing, because he's you know he's old and he um he got respiratory problems, was he ended up in the hospital. Stelvio was on top gear, that was, and I not when I was there though, no, nah. that was only what. I was doing the COVID actually, um, when they opened up and then that's then they locked down again. We went to, uh, when we had to start back in Italy, we went to a pizza. That's quite funny. If you get pizza in, um, <laughs> in, in Switzerland, it costs an arm and a leg just for flipping pizza. You go into flipping over the, you know, if you start back into Italy, and it's like six quid <laughs> and it's a sit down meal. <laughs> <laughs> you had the thermometer thing to like, take our temperature and stuff like that at the time as well. But it was quite good because after you're on the bikes, you, you're not really coming in contact with anybody, are you? It's just, uh, no, you've just got the air rushing past you. I did nearly kill myself, though, on the motorbike. That was a bit, oh, crikey. Because I was videoing everybody, you see, at the same time, I made a really silly move. I overtook our friend who had the, um, the BMW GS, and then there's a bend. And I couldn't make the bend. So on the other side of the road, you end up through the tunnel. And um, on the wrong side of the bloody road, and a flipping BMW was coming the opposite direction. No, was it BMW or an Audi? I can't remember. Anyway, another car coming the opposite direction. So I had to manoeuvre myself between on the other side of the car and the wall. I'll tell you something, after that point, that was it. I just calmed right down. I was getting a bit cocky, I think, really. I'd kill myself being myself. The thing is, my bike is powerful. It's a 1400cc. It's, you know, it's not a sports bike, it's a muscle bike. It's um, a GS. Um, GSX uh, 1400 and um, oh, I thought I had enough time <laughs> well I had enough time to get to, you know to overtake but obviously on you know, that bend it was crikey you know it just crept up on me the weather was bad you see as well which wasn't great ah have you watched the Rangers <laughs> When you had a house extended in St Albans, I got a builder to make us a shed. His cabinet maker hated doing it, but it was the best shed ever. <laughs> yeah, probably. It's not the sort of big a cabinet maker who wants to make us a shed. That must be a fantastic shed, though. Right, I'm going to call that it, and I'll thank everybody who's joined me on this stream, even doing the football <laughs> and all the rugby. Uh, I really do appreciate it. It that because it's only a small channel and he's you know done a bit of sport and that was fantastic and um yeah i just thought well i'll be putting the shots together anyway so why not stream it so i might actually stream the other ones make the other ones as well but i'll have to 
really get on with it, so I have to not engage quite as much. But it might be still interesting. So anyway, thank you for watching. And have a wonderful evening. Don't forget we're streaming again tomorrow, 8 p.m. GMT time on the other over the channel, all shorts. Um, about some craziness that's going on in the world. Something. <laughs> be good to have a little chat anyway. So, and I've been playing, but I think I'm getting better with the uh, OBS software and getting the media work and the stuff. So, oh no, I think so. The learning curve, I'll tell you, it's all technical stuff. My little brain, it struggles. Pulses, it does in my head. It's either that or rattles. Maybe both. Anyway, ta ta. <laughs> Don't forget, click like. Do you want... I don't really watch Trump Street. I quite enjoy this, actually. quite like chatting to you, Taps. Gals and... Gals and guys. Oh, do I want to stop streaming? I suppose I should. I, I suppose I'm a married man. I really ought to see the missus, really. And she's got the grandchildren at the minute as well. Or two of them. So, I suppose I'd better be a good husband. Ta-ta! <laughs>